the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome Make in. a left on. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, welcome in. It's a special episode of the Fantasy Footballers. Wednesday, November 27th. Mega. As Thanksgiving yeah. is before us. As the great poet of uh, oh, no. from the United States... LL Cool J once said, mm. my head is like a shark's fin. Oh, well, that's uh, accurate. This is the Megalodon episode for 2019. Let me take a deep breath here. We've got Ugh. Turkey Day Awards. We've got Buy or Sell. We've got News and Notes. We've got the entire fantasy forecast, the Thanksgiving Day games, the no weekend games. No bye weeks. No bye weeks. Every game. No, the Megala schedule. <sighs> We've got starts of the week. We've got boom, boom, kicker. We've got ballers on a budget. We're going to be here for hours. <laughs> Strap in. <laughs> I could do a show for hours. Did you uh, you guys properly caffeinate for this episode? I, um, I have an energy drink in my coffee mug as we speak. Okay. All right, so you're ready to go, Brooks. Before the, well, thank you, Jason, for oh, stop for slurping, stop. and they're out. <laughs> We've got a jam packed show. Before it began, Brooks even uh, when we begin a show, Brooks is a man of mild volumes. Would you Would you agree with that? I, yeah, yeah, that would definitely be yep. a, a true statement. Hey, Brooks, would you agree true. with that? Very true. Yeah, and before you know every show, he normally says, you know, like. Let's have a great show. Let's have a great show. Hey guys, right. Let's have a good Somehow show. Somehow, oh, come on. The mild volume okay, becomes no. a high Mickey okay. Mouse voice. This is how it is. It's let's have a good show, guys. Go get him. <laughs> Why is he constipated? <laughs> well, I'm trying to give because he's got energy, but it's really but it's quiet. at a low volume. Brooks, this is all said with respect, but I want to pe- let a great people show, know, guys. Oh, oh, he's like oh, a four, uh, three and a half out of ten volume standard, like happy or sad. But this, I'm telling you, he got up to like a five. Oh, it was incredible. Before this show. And it was like, even had good some, show, guys. With some rasp. Good show, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, you're going to want to follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. If you make it through to the end of this Megla Bowl, we've got a surprise for you. And might or might not. it could benefit you. And that's that's where I'll leave it. But Twitter at the FF Ballers, the website's thefantasyfootballers.com. And if you're new to this show this year, this is going to be a long one. This is our very special pre-Thanksgiving extravaganza. We're excited to have you with us. We're going to kick it all off with our Turkey Day Awards for 2019. And here's how it's going to work. We're going to uh, we're going to hand out five different Turkey Day Awards. I'm going to read a description for each of these awards. And you guys are going to, we'll all try to figure out who what player is best described for this award and see if we get mm. it right. Brooks picked the winners. We don't know what they are, but let's go. I'm going to pick my own winners. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna no, no, Brooks, is, Brooks can't tell me what to do. Yeah, he, no, not at that volume. Hey, guys. Is there a Jack in the Box award? <laughs> yes, there actually there is. <laughs> Poor Brooks. Oh, All right. yeah, there is. <laughs> so, Have you ever attended a Megalodon before, no, Jason? this is my first time. So the first award, now was this named, renamed by you, Jason? Uh, it was not, but okay. it is aptly named if it means... Super delicious. Uh, the, this award is the Tiffany's Mashed Potatoes. That's your wife. That is my wife's world-famous mashed potatoes. Let me describe them. This award is uh, a lumpy, buttery gob of mashed potatoes is what everyone needs to add body to their plate. It's as dependable as they get, and we all know butter makes everything better. I take issue with the lumpy because they're they're, they're smooth, whipped and smooth and mm. rich and creamy. But I think the point here is this is a... So we need something not healthy, but awesome, delicious. Well, I think dependable is yeah, I think the real. That's, that's the, the word I was. The word is de- on. as dependable as they get. Okay. So who is the most dependable? Like your your wife's mashed potatoes each and every Thanksgiving, they never let you down. So who's the most dependable player in fantasy football worthy of that moniker? There are two off the top of my head. 
But only one of those two players has zero bust games. The other one actually has a bust game but that many have forgotten about. So I'm going to guess Michael Thomas. Really? Well, there is another player who has zero bust games. I thought you were between this player and Christian McCaffrey. But Christian McCaffrey's week two. That's what I was talking about. He's got a bust. He's week. got a bust. But another player who does not have a bust game is Dalvin Cook. That's true. Week in, week out, been steady. He's been great. Uh, the two names that came to mind for me were Christian McCaffrey and Michael Thomas. So I will uh, cast my vote for Michael Thomas because he has done it in the most impressive fashion to me. I suppose McCaffrey's on the same level changing quarterbacks, but ultimately Thomas went through a totally different quarterback and still put up top-tier numbers. Brooks, who is the winner? Who did you select for this one? The winner is Dalvin Cook. <laughs> oh, okay. One for the good guys. Well, I like the Cook comment i mean cook cooking yeah, some mashed potatoes i see what you're doing mm. all right the next award is the burned dinner rolls Ooh, oh that's not good oh no. gosh you put so much time and effort in preparing the meal but unexpectedly the rolls get burned this is disappointment that's what we're talking about sometimes you just have to oh this is easy scrape the carbon shavings off or throw it all away in sadness this is easy very oh, really? very oh very easy to me because it's mm. it's it's clear as day like there's 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 plenty of busts, right? Odell Beckham, but I feel like he would be more of like uh, food yeah, poisoning. I've got mine, yeah. Food poisoning? But okay. when you burn dinner rolls, they're awesome. And it kind of wasn't your fault. You know, I mean, it's your. they got Wait, burnt on accident. They're awesome? Real dinner rolls are awesome. But when you leave them in too long and they get burnt by an accident that wasn't their fault. Oh, he's going juju. You're darn right I'm going juju. I see. Dinner rolls are delicious. If if you if they get burnt at no fault of their own, now see I would agree with you. Although I might say that you were slightly irresponsible to leave them in the oven that long yeah. and presume that they would be good under all circumstances. There's really only one way. Well, that, I that didn't know that Big Ben didn't set an alarm on the timer. Unfortunately, for our juju debates all off season, yeah. Uh, you get to sit there and believe that he would have been a top five wide receiver regardless, 100%. which is a. Uh, impossible to know conclusion uh, he hasn't certainly demanded or overcome like michael thomas christian mccaffrey have but i would agree juju makes the most sense mike do you have a vote oj howard okay yeah that well that's nothing to salvage there no that's true they've been brooks torched. who who's the winner who do you have Wait, did you did you guess i did i said you went juju. oh okay okay we went with bobby woods oh robert hurts. woods oh because he's sort of pulling it together I feel like you could still eat. I don't eat burnt dinner rolls. Right. But Bobby Woods has been okay. Maybe that's what, I think that's what he means. We missed the part of the, or didn't focus on the, they've scraped off the burnt and they're still trying to eat it. Oh, okay. That's a good answer. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> Juju yeah. was a nomination for sure. Candidate. Uh, Yeah, I, I, like the, I like going with the bigger expectations for that one, but I, I get it. Bobby Woods is one. No doubt about it. All right. The sweet potato casserole. Now, I know both of you don't like sweet potatoes, which they're is terrible. weird. Correct. It's because they're disgusting the and mushy. Take. Yeah, it's just a bad bad take. It's not going to land well. People you, about to eat their yams, man. No, what, no, no. You guys that, like baby food? Yeah, I love having oh, nasty baby food. We just talked about mashed potatoes, which, knuckleheads. Yeah, but you don't. Brooks really, is in on sweet potatoes. I know that. Yeah. Exactly. You hear that? <laughs> love, Heavy, hearty, them. delicious for the first few bites, but you can only have so much before it makes you vomit all over the floor and thus completely ruin Thanksgiving. And your family calls you a no good has been. There's another. There's another very easy one. All right. Very easy. It's it's Sammy Watkins. That first bite. Oh my god. That first bite. Oh, so good. And then you're like, oh wait, these are sweet potatoes. These are disgusting. These leave me mm. uh, feeling yucky in my tummy. And so yeah, it, at first when it touches your tongue, they've been sugared up enough where you you get tricked. That's what Sammy Watkins did to Sammy us. Sammy did that. T.J. Hawkinson did that Certainly. as well. But I doubt he'd be the winner here. That was the other name that came to mind. Who who had that? David Johnson did it at the beginning oh. of the year. Jared Goff did it here and there. Mike, do you have a vote? I'm going to go with uh, Jason's again. I think yeah. Sammy Watkins is the right pick. I think Sammy Watkins is the right pick just because of the how well it fits the question of right at the very beginning it was great and then terrible since. But the other one, I, I think Stephon Diggs is in a nomination here, but you go in spurts with him. But I'm going to go with Sammy. All right, Brooks, what do we got? 
Well done, guys. Sammy Watkins, the Lizard King. See, mm. here I am defending Sweet Potatoes, mm. and then yeah. Sammy Watkins gets a – Sweet Potatoes are dead to me. Mm, that's right. That's, that's, they're dead to me now. That's cold-blooded. Now I'm going to stare at those yams, <laughs> and I'm not going to eat them because I don't want – I don't draft Sammy, and now I can't. Yeah. You're welcome. Cold-blooded. Right. Oh, you're trying to set me up for that. <laughs> oh, there it is. Blooded. That's such a positive sound. Like, that that drop this show is the sweet potato casserole drop of the show. This show is a very positive show. That's true. The Mike Wright Special, the Jack in the Box Award, yes. the random dish that somebody brought because, well, they're convinced Thanksgiving food is trash and outdated, and it's time to stop at the old way of thinking. I don't understand how the new way of thinking is Jack in the Box. Uh, open your eyes and realize that this could be the best thing ever. Man, I got this. Is easy. These maybe it's because food is my wheelhouse, but I, I feel guess, like every man. time I every time you read these, I've got an instant and obvious answer. But I shouldn't go first because you guys just keep getting on my coattails. Do you guys have any answers, or you so, want me to go first? Because I'm all about so this answer. Can, something outdated, something new. I'll, I'll, I'll throw out my answer then, because the way I'm reading this, this is the new hotness. Hmm. So I'm going to go with Chris Godwin. Okay, okay. I think that's great. Is the old way of thinking Mike Evans? Yes. Okay. I, I don't mind that. I think uh, Austin Hooper fits the category. Okay, yeah. Uh, people wanted to believe he wasn't an upper echelon top sure. tier guy. Sure, I, I think that fits. The way that I see this is you thought it was trash, but it turns out it's pretty good. So to me... Is that Ronald Jones? No. I'm going to go I, Ronald Jones. I will never. I will never. No. What a monster. To me, it's Devontae Parker. It's, oh, my it's gosh. Like, this guy, right. I mean, left okay. for dead, he's terrible. He's All awful. Right, then it's like, oh, wait, this is really good. Brooks, is he right? Devontae Parker. Oh, yeah. Hey, of course, the food takes. You got him on lockdown. Take lock. <laughs> Take lock. Yeah. I feel like someone's peeking. It feels like it, but I can promise to high heaven you, that I have not peaked. Here's the you problem, have always Jason. said you will cheat to win. You, oh, have, you have established a true. long line of cheating. That's true. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be this happy. That's fair. Yes, you would. No, he you would. would. <laughs> yes, he would, because he's already said he will cheat to win and be happy about it. Uh, uh, I mean, I guilty as charged. On I, all those accusations. You're the boy who cried wolf to yes, this, for you right this now. Is, this is one I can't pull myself out of. We're going, Brooks, please get the uh, guy that comes in and does lie detector tests, okay? All right. Yeah, the, the guy. There's the one guy. <laughs> <laughs> that, that You know that dude that's real famous? <laughs> Triple A. Because he's doing this all around the country. Bring him in. Last one. Thanksgiving Day Turkey Award. It's the showstopper. The MVP of Thanksgiving Day. Easy. Yeah, Mike. Uh, it's Lamar Jackson. Oh, oh! I agree. It's Lamar Jackson. He's just yeah. he's the showstopper. He's the MVP. That makes sense. I'm going to pivot just because uh, I want to pivot. Where are you going to go, McCaffrey? I was going to go McCaffrey. Yeah. So. The, the thing the thing about Lamar Jackson is you took him very late, and so it, thus his his value is multiplied. Yeah, but Brooks, remember when we traded for Christian McCaffrey? What is it? <laughs> I picked Christian McCaffrey. Yes! yes! Mike oh. gets it again. Or uh, Jason gets it again. That's my name. And Mike genuinely, like I can see in his face, he genuinely believes it's that Lamar I. It's Lamar Jackson. That I, oh, well, yeah. Sure. No, I genuinely you believe that genuinely you have cheated. That yes. I cheated. I did yes. not cheat. 100%. Otherwise, I would have gone five for five. All right. No, uh-uh. Because you That's know how, how to <laughs> cheat. <laughs> You know this I, is a this is an unwinnable situation, for and me. it's the bed that I, you will sleep in for I the rest just, of your life. I just dominated this segment, and now I sure feel like did. I'm cheating. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm cheating. I did not. All right, let's move on. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, last week Ooh, we did a speaking of cheating. You're talking to me? Yeah. All well, right, we did a week 12 edition of Buy or Sell. I ended up going four for five. And the only reason we went four out of five is because the the final prop was Michael Gallup at 55 receiving yards, which he nailed. Is a push. 55. We, we all sold that. What? Mike, I would have gone. F I would have gone. What is going on over here? <laughs> this is the Megalodon. You get that trigger finger ready. This guy's ridiculous. Get me the soundboard. We all missed the Michael Gallup one. Yes. So I would have been perfect well, is you, what I'm saying. The touchdown well, streak continued for Jarvis Landry. Marvin Jones had uh, fewer than 10 fantasy points. Curtis Samuel had fewer than 7.5 targets. And Calvin Ridley was a top 12 wide receiver. Here's what I will say, and Andy will be very happy. The, 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 
Is that is that <laughs> no? Did I get it? This is buy or sell. We don't have a push option. You have to buy. You have to sell. Yeah. So if it's a push, you have to throw it out completely. So yeah, I you would, went four for. Four. I would say Andy went four for four. Thank you. Okay, that, that t- took a turn yep. after you hated me for not hitting fifty five fast enough. That's All true. right, Megalodon edition for week thirteen. Brooks has titled this buy or sell segment. Will they bounce back? All right, Amari Cooper. Will he be a top sell? Top 15 wide receiver against Buffalo at home I don't care. on Thanksgiving. Goose last week. I am buying it. I love Amari Cooper at home. This team needs some redemption. They're seven point favorites. I'm in. I have manually moved uh, outside of the algorithms we have set up Amari Cooper down to about my wide receiver 20. I do not buy this. I sell this. I'm contractually obligated to sell. You are. That's right. Uh, due to the apology gone yeah. wrong. And look, don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm going to play Amari Cooper where I have him, but I I dislike him. Out of spite. Yes. It, it does say spite sell. In yes, here. thank you. Russell Wilson. We'll just stay where Mike is bragging. <laughs> yes, this is uh, great. Mike's a obligated top, to sell. Yeah, a top 10 quarterback against Minnesota this week. Last week he was QB 18. He's had fewer than 250 passing yards in four or five games. And Minnesota's only allowed three top ten weeks to quarterbacks wow, all year. Really? Buy or sell. Russell Wilson is a top ten quarterback against Minnesota. I'm actually going to buy it. I think he will squeeze into the top ten this week. I will buy it as well. Minnesota's defense, you can say that very lined item of uh, how many top ten performances, but their secondary is not that great. Russell Wilson, despite uh, having been inconsistent lately, I don't think anybody's arguing is not great. So top ten this week. Yeah, I buy it. Oh, all right, that's a Monday, Monday contracts. night football game too. <laughs> Saquon Barkley over eighty total yards against Green Bay last week was uh, sixty. He's only surpassed eighty in four of eight games. Oh, Green my. Bay, you can run against them. You can. I think eighty yards. I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna buy it. This is total. This is this is receiving and rushing. I mean, I, I know he hasn't been hitting it. But he's Saquon Barkley. He's really good. He can he can do that in a play. I like I like that your defense is. I know he hasn't done it, but he's he's Saquon Barkley. Well, that, that Saquon Barkley is in fact the player who is still not doing basically those yards. <laughs> basically, what I'm saying is I know he hasn't done it recently, but he's done it a whole heck of a lot. That's what I mean. Saquon, he's gonna smash that. Mike. Yeah, I buy it too. <laughs> oh, after all that, Cortland Sutton, a top twenty wide receiver against the Chargers last week, only one catch. Sell. Started the game, by the way, with that catch. I'm like, oh, he's doing it again, and then never got another one. I Mike will, is selling. Ca- I will, Casey Hayward is a monster. I will sell as well. This is really a, solely a question of does he get a touchdown, and if you look at the odds of whether or not he's getting a touchdown with Brandon Allen and Casey Hayward. Unfortunately, I agree, which yeah. is not really helping our – No, we got three universe, universal answers in a three row. Three universes. The multiverse. All right, Darren Waller, a top six, uh, top six tight end this week against Kansas City. It's a great Last matchup. week he was three for 41. He was the tight end 11. I have to buy this. You'll find out why later. Mm. Yeah, what's interesting about Darren Waller is where Hunter Renfro, his injury, it stinks for him. He was having a nice breakout rookie campaign. But Hunter Renfro was the one who was siphoning those short Darren Waller targets where he Waller was the absolute target vacuum at the beginning of the year. Top six, though. Uh, goo, goo, yeah. Man. I, have goo, to, goo. I have to sell it. Goo, goo, right. He's selling it. I wanted to be the only one selling, but I am going to I, sell. I think that is he's a very – fringe, right? I mean, he'll be right around there. Yeah, it's a very difficult line. This isn't an anti-Waller take so much as it is a – anti top six team. there is a direct target correlation between hunter renfro when he began his five plus target streak and waller's eight plus target streak stopped at the exact same time mm-hmm. that was buy or sell from pristine auction you can use the code ballers at pristine auction.com and get a megala deal oh over oh, at pristine auction well done andy Thank you. Uh, we're going to get into news and notes, the fantasy forecast, the Thanksgiving Day games. But before we do that, we're going to pause. And we're going to thank today's sponsor, 
Simply Safe. If you've been thinking about your home security, there is no better time than now to, you know, maybe you're watching Home Alone. And you see those crazy conniving robbers, and mm-hmm. you're like, man, I'm not protected against them or anything else. Simply Safe Home Security is giving our listeners an I amazing. I need more micro machines. That's right, uh, <laughs> included. Uh, they have a Black Friday offer going on. This week, Simply Safe is offering our listeners a huge exclusive deal for Black Friday. You get 25% off any new system plus a free HD security camera. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, they have everything you need to keep your home safe. We've had it here at the studio for what's, years. What's the URL? Simplysafe.com slash footballers. Do not wait. Simplysafe.com slash footballers. I'm getting in on this, right? I, you know, You're know, you purchasing it live on the air? <laughs> well, I'm pulling it up to purchase right after the show. But yes, I... I you get the free security camera. You get 25% off. It's a, they're it's a the great best, company. It's the best deal that you'll see. We have them here at the studio and have had them for years since before they were a sponsor. Don't miss the amazing Black Friday deal. That is simplysafe.com slash footballers. Foot Clan, you know what time it is. We know that you wait for it every single year. Omaha Steaks oh. time. The limited time holiday offer is here. OmahaSteaks.com. You enter the code footballers in the search bar. You're going to order the favorite gift package, the gift everyone will love for only $69.99. Order now. And here's what you're going to get. Megala meat. Four six-ounce bacon-wrapped filet mignons. Four savory premium mm. pork chops. Four Omaha steak burgers. Four perfectly brown potatoes au gratin. Four made-from-scratch caramel apple tartlets. An Omaha steak signature seasoning packet. Plus, you're going to get a free six-piece cutlery set and cutting board. <laughs> I did it. I got through the whole Very thing. Very nice. Look, get all this delicious food plus the free cutlery, cutlery set. They'll enjoy it for years to come for only sixty nine ninety nine. My fridge at home is stocked with OmahaSteaks.com. I get in on this deal every single year. Order now. Get the favorite gift holiday package plus the free six-piece cutlery set and cutting board for only sixty nine ninety nine. Just go to OmahaSteaks.com, type footballers in the search bar. That's OmahaSteaks.com, and type code FOOTBALLERS. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. I'm shaking my head over here because my dynasty roster fighting for a playoff positioning against Judge Giamatti this week. Well, I don't think I'm going to be with this guy. T.Y. Hilton, Mm. unsure of his week 13 status with the calf. He came out and talked about it was on the pitch count last week, which already reduces probability of success, right? Yeah, and then he was on the drop count, which added to that. He had to have an obligatory two drops. Unbelievable. I don't think you're going to be with him this week. I don't either. And so you're going to need to make some adjustments to your roster. For me, that means deciding between guys like McCole Hardman sliding into your lineup Mm. instead of a T.Y. Hilton. They play Tennessee on Sunday. It's the morning game. But that's where we're at, we're at with T.Y. Hilton, and you're going to have to keep an eye on – well, follow us on Twitter, at the FF Ballers. We'll let you know what's going on. Adam Thielen, the hamstring, resume practicing on Tuesday. Are you guys expecting to have Thielen back in lineups? I am, yes. Yeah, I, I'm expecting him to play. I think he'll have an all right game, but this is a lesson learned uh, where – you might want to wait before putting out the injured player in the first week back. If you have that luxury, I would, you know, try to avoid having the I mean this is a win and get in situation. You have him go out there reaggravated on play 2, you're going to be really upset. I want to just throw this in there. I, from time to time on Twitter, I, I post stats and summaries of players and positions. It, it, suddenly it seems like I'm a real Kirk Cousins truther. Because all the stats back Kirk Cousins up. Mm. If you look at, mm. I'm trying to think of how people are viewing the MVP conversation, right? And Russell Wilson, they're they're nine and two, right? Seattle's nine and two, and he's carried them, and so he's in the consideration. And then nine and two, right? The Baltimore Ravens. That's why Lamar Jackson's in there. Minnesota hasn't had that year record wise to match those teams. Eight and three <laughs> losers. Yeah, but it's close, and Kirk Cousins has been incredible. I just looked up. Best passer rating in the fourth quarter. Nobody's even close to Kirk Cousins. He's like 135 in the fourth quarter this year. He's just been. I think the problem is tearing people apart. Dalvin Cook is 
the machine that That's, makes that offense run. I think you're right. I think that well, I think it's certainly the one that distracts us from bringing his name up in the in the discussion. But if you win at every metric, I think you should be talked about. Sure. What and he just was. Yeah. They, they there you go, Kirk. Just like you asked me to do. All right, Devonta Freeman listed as full in Tuesday's practice. They play on Thursday. I think he's going to play. I do too. I'm not going to play him similar to the Adam Thielen, but this says that Brian Hill and uh, Quadri Allison, yeah. the, those, those. You're not playing Devonta Freeman. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, look, he's been in and out. He hasn't been phenomenal when he's been in. He's been okay, but yeah, on a, I'm, I'm personally going to avoid it. You know what Turkey Day Award he is? He's the age-old recipe that's been passed down for generations that you always remember as being really good, but mm. then whenever you make it now, you're like, this is not as good as I remember. Yeah. Yeah. All right, offensive coordinator Mike Gross says it's looking positive that the Philly offense will get Alshon Jeffrey and Nelson mm. Aguilar back. Mm. Mm. It's funny because last week it was looking real positive that they were getting Alshon Jeffrey and Nelson Aguilar back. Give them another week and I'll bet it comes true from last week, which is this week, which <laughs> is true. <laughs> That's going to make the Carson Wentz failure all that much worse for you. It's uh, all about the hand. Oh, uh, it, if his hand I is thought fine, it was all about no, that's the wide receivers. I'm saying the only, ra the only way that Carson <laughs> can have – he's going to be What about all fine. about the O-line? What about Lane Johnson? He's back. Okay. All right. I hope he has a good game. Me too. <laughs> Gerald Everett, day-to-day -day with a knee injury – this is one that is going to be very trepidatious for fantasy owners this week. Yeah. Titans a difficult position. Gerald Everett is lined up to play Arizona, the singular best matchup that has ever uh, no anyone in history of mankind has known about. Yeah. But Gerald Everett has now consecutive games in which he's played 17 or fewer snaps. He was a 50-snap-a-week guy before these past two games, but against Chicago, banged up. Baltimore, banged up. He's dealing with a knee that he hyperextended in the game, but he was also dealing with an ankle injury. Well, the ankle was getting better, and he's like, oh, I got to pivot. And so, yeah, he, he hyperextended the knee. Um, he says he's fine, but uh, they're saying day-to-day. -day. I, I do think you can throw Gerald Everett out if you are desperate out there. And, you know, you, when you look at touchdown upside. Throw him out? I, I'm saying into your, into roster. your roster. I think you, I think if you're desperate. Out to you, get in, baby. You yeah. still could. Throw him out there into your lineup. <laughs> Got it. On the field. Throw yes. him out on the Throw field. Throw him out on the field. Okay. But uh, there are better options. We'll talk about it in our starts of the week. I don't want to bury this. Elijah McGuire worked out for the Chiefs. You wonder if it means that, you know, they could just be working on that emergency list. But they've been banged up. They've had LaShawn McCoy with the concussion thing. And then, obviously, uh, Damian Williams, more severe injury. Mm, could I mean a few things. Maybe keep that Daryl Williams, LaShawn on your roster. For sure. I mean, I, I haven't seen any definitive update on Damian Williams, but when Elijah came in, the first thought I had was, okay, Damian Williams is hurt. Remember when the Cardinals were dealing, <laughs> working out a few guys, Zach Zinner and Alfred Morris? and You don't do it for no reason. Not, you You're know, not you just don't. like, Elijah's my buddy. Coincidence. So I want to bring him in. and just Sometimes you want to just watch a good workout. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. My Saturday is open. Yeah. yeah. Elijah, what are you doing? You just reminded me that we have to go work out today. Whoa. Oh, man. On a mega? On a mega day. Mega workout. I'm on a mega la cry. All right. Don't forget, drop it like it's hot. Your waivers going through today. Check out who people let go of. A lot of tough decisions. And people are playing for one week right now. So I, I got a text from a friend yesterday. Brought up some pretty big time names. Which one do I drop? You know, people thinking about, I don't know, uh, David Johnson. Is he going to end up on waiver wires this week? And what do you do if he does? Do you really roster a guy like that? People want to know. So, yeah. Sony Michelle gets brought up as a drop candidate. People are going to drop Sony Michelle this week. I know they are. Foot Clan Game Day alerts at jointhefoot.com every Sunday morning. Mike is also live on Sunday live. That's what we call it. <laughs> Allow myself. We live on live. To introduce myself. But you can find that on all of our uh, social media handles. It's an hour before Sunday kickoff. And news and notes always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Don't miss a single piece of news. Maybe a T.Y. Hilton update over there on the Sleeper app. We're going to kick up. Uh, kick up. Kick off. That's, <laughs> that's what I was going for. We're going to kick off. We're, not, we're barely even started, man. Yeah. He's saving it. He's right. saving it to get through. Well, I see this. Somebody put a very big emoji of a turkey 
to remind me that it's the Thanksgiving Day games, and it's a little distracting. What what is that thing called? The thing that hangs down from the turkey? Oh, oh we looked we've had this discussion. Yeah, Haven't we? Brooks, the Brooks, gobbler. You're the, you're is it the gizzard? Is no, it a, it's, is it's, it a gizzard? No, no, it's not the turkey gizzard. Neck Every year parts. we want to. <laughs> We want to get ready for this. Now, Mike made a the, very... The, wait, the red fleshy bit hanging off the Uh-oh. turkey's beak, they're called the snoods. Oh, that's right. <laughs> the snood. Show me your snoods. <laughs> <laughs> it's a family right. show. Mike. It's, uh, turkeys, they're everywhere. <laughs> Put a scarf on. Are we on. sending snood pics? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. If you want a little, I'm more ahead. impressed with my turkey sound now that I've heard a real turkey, or was that me again? It's hard to say. I'll never tell. <laughs> my favorite part of this, if you want to glance into our process, is at the very beginning of the week we knew we were going to break out these Thursday games, and uh, I think I sent like a note to Mike. I'm like, oh yeah, make sure you, uh, you know, get our announcer guy to. To give us a I drop. I didn't want to do it. Give us a drop. So you've got this long drop and then just the gobble in the middle and then the rest of the drop. Um, very well done, though. I was I was impressed. I Thank like you. the references in there, too. All right. Set your lineups for Thanksgiving Day, which means you've got three games on Thanksgiving and you have a number of players that you want to get out of your flex spot and into your positional spot so that if something happens, if you need to pivot from T.Y. Hilton – to, I don't know, a running back, you need to be able to do it on Sunday morning. So make sure you're not locking yourself down in the flex position, right? All right, the Bears at 5-6 and six take on the Lions at 3-7-1. and one. The Bears are three-and-a-half-point favorites with a rather dismal 38-point over-under. 38 points. Yeah. That is rough. There is the possibility that uh, this combined with turkey consumption may put you into a sleep state well, sooner this, rather is, than later. Is this the first one? Actually, yeah. it Morning is. Game? Yeah, it's the 1230 Eastern. Yeah. So this the uh, one of the big question marks here that we, we don't know yet is the Jeff Driscoll situation of, as to whether or not he'll be playing. He's dealing with a hamstring issue. Uh, if not, then... <laughs> who's, mean, the, who's the backup, Jay? I believe it is pronounced David Blow. I we don't I don't know for sure. Yeah, is that how you would sp- uh, pronounce that, Mike? B L O U G H. Uh, I would not blah blah. Either way, it's gonna <laughs> blow. They maybe need more emphasis on the G H. Blau. Yeah. Oh, oh. It's German. Yes. Yeah. David the Blau. God bless you. <laughs> Ooh, it is I. Here's the thing, David Blau. <laughs> Now presenting <laughs> David Blah. Oh, oh, oh. I think now I am from Transylvania. <laughs> David Blah. I mean, the reality look is... <laughs> somebody spreads the... the, the hey, sweet pic- of him. The sweet potatoes across the table to Go Mike, deep. and he goes, Blah. I, uh, a uh, holiday. Uh, um, right. Hold here's the, the garlic. Here's the thing. We've got a lot of matchups to get through, guys. We've got all day to do this show, <laughs> my, my man. I think Driscoll plays. I don't think there's any chance he's not out there, to be honest with you. I think he's going to be out there. The problem is Driscoll has been, you know, he's... he's <laughs> he says it's definitely gotten better every day. Oh, each that's and, good. Each and every day, his hamstring's feeling a little bit better. The problem is what has helped Driscoll in in both fantasy for, a, him, true. for himself, but also in, in opening things up for broken plays is his rushing ability. He has been a very mobile quarterback. We're talking about, you know, you look at his 37, 51, 63 rushing yards in his three games, and if he's got a hamstring issue, yeah, he can he can stand in the pocket and throw the ball, but I think this is going to be very bad against a good Bears defense. So what the, what the Lions are going to try to do, obviously, is run the ball. That's where the Bears have been susceptible. And there's a lot of questions about Bo Scarborough. Can you trust him? Can you start him? You look at the Bears and you think, oh, that's a terrible matchup. They're one of the best defenses in the league. But against running backs, that is not true. They've, they've been beatable on the ground. And Scarborough, look, they, he's getting more than 15 carries. Yeah. He's doing work with them. You can't trust him, though. No, but I think you can flex him. And by that, I mean put him in your running back slot 
moving a better running back to flex because he's an early game, but he is I think I, I think he is a startable oh, option. Yeah, I, I guess I just disagree with that. If if you're dealing with a limited Jeff Driscoll and you're dealing with maybe David Block <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. then you're in a position where there's one thing that you need to slow down here. I don't think that you have a high ceiling in this game. I would try to flex someone else myself. So, Mike, why don't you weigh in? Because differing opinions. I I think you can flex both. So that would be a bow flex? Yep. Ooh, Absolutely. Well like, right. done. <laughs> it's just it's, it's hard to find a running back who's going to get 15 or more carries. Fair enough. And, it, I mean, it, it, do you go with the narrative of, Okay, Jeff Driscoll's out, so the running game won't work as well. Or Jeff Driscoll's out. They lean on it. They're going to lean on the running game. I think he's going to get a lot of carries. But to speak to Andy's point of uh, I do agree that the upside is limited here. You know, I have been madly in love with Philip Lindsay. His matchup last week was great. He's taken over the timeshare, and it hasn't worked out, even though he's actually been very good and been getting carries. The reason it hasn't worked out for real fantasy success that you're you're hopeful for is because the offense as a whole is not scoring they're not in scoring positions and, and you know when you've got that third string quarterback running the show it it does limit the whole offense so i i while i i already said i think you can he's a flex worthy player i do think your upside is limited so if yeah. benny, benny snell or both flex i would go benny snell okay if you if you need to swing for the fences Right, if you're in the position where you're playing against a great team and you need a high score, then I would not say he's your option. All right, the Lions' defense has not been good this year. 25th against fantasy quarterbacks, 31st against fantasy running backs. Which, in a normal circumstance, you look at Mitch Trubisky and David Montgomery and you say, "Well, they should be must starts." In your mind, are you looking at both of those players? Like Montgomery, we've talked a lot about. This should be a smash start for him. He's getting almost 17 opportunities a game. But do you it, like him more than Bowflex? If not here, where? And That's the we, truth, but we, maybe it's nowhere. Right, and you've talked about it. You have already uh, been on record saying you would drop David Montgomery as a landmine situation that someone else would get him and, and try to play him. Um, I think I'm that, playing Benny Snell over him. Yeah, and, I, and I, uh, I would play Benny Snell over him as well. But if you've got David Montgomery on your roster, I think he's probably going to be in your starting lineup. This is, you know, the Lions have not been able to stop the run, and there are legitimate questions to whether or not the last few games have been an ankle issue for David Montgomery. Obviously, as time goes on, ankles heal. So, I, you know, it's tough because he's been putrid. He's been uh, as bad as anyone not named Kalen Balazs in the league, uh, but you're going to get – I mean, what about in this game? Bo Scarborough or David Montgomery? I lean David Montgomery in the sense that everything in me tells me that's the better play. Because like you should be playing David Montgomery, but I'm I'm afraid of getting burned again. Yeah, it it's 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 rough. But I think Mitchell Trubisky in this matchup that is easy for quarterbacks. I brought it up last week in the Allen Robinson start. Trubisky is a significantly better quarterback quarterback against the bottom ten passing defenses and and the Lions apply here in week 10 Chicago beat the Lions 20 to 13 Trubisky had 173 yards but he had three touchdowns against this Lions D Galladay was three for 57 and one in that game when you look at the wide receiver position you've seen a small emergence from Anthony Miller in recent yeah, weeks targets receptions yeah he's somebody you know Allen Robinson you've got to play him this week and you and Taylor Gabriel is dealing with a concussion that makes like, Anthony Miller Anthony pretty Miller is interesting like the what you were talking about, Andy, 11 targets two weeks ago, nine targets last week against the Giants, six receptions in both games. He's not setting the world on fire, but he's trending in the right direction, and it's a very positive matchup for him. And he's a talented player. Sure. Would you be waiting on T.Y. Hilton or hitting some of these wow. Thursday options like while you have them? Like Anthony Miller, you know, you said the concussion for Gabriel. Miller, I think, has, has had – Eight targets in consecutive games? Uh, Miller? I just I, said it. 11 and 9. 11 and 9. Sorry, eight yeah. receptions then. Six. All right. Well, I didn't listen. I don't probably listen, listen to the show. when I talk. Um, yeah, I would not. I was too busy looking <laughs> up. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I think there are plenty of Anthony Miller tier of wide receivers that are later where on you. On Sunday? Can, yeah, where you can wait 
Um, I wouldn't be throwing Anthony Miller out. So would you uh, asking for a friend? Would you play Anthony Miller on Thursday, Mike, or would you wait on uh, and then just play McCall Hardman? I'd play Hardman to d- wait on Hilton. I would. I would wait. So if Hilton's a- let me ask that if Hilton's active since we brought him up in the news, does that mean that you're playing him no matter what, regardless of the pitch count situation? Not. Not that, no matter what. But I'm playing him over Anthony Miller and McCole Hardman. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Though, but on the other side of the ball, let's look at a world where David – I already talked about all those guys. But we didn't talk about it if David Bloch is the quarterback. I, I'm just lying. I didn't. I was just trying to get you Like, are, you, are we playing Galladay and Marvin Jones with confidence huh. if a vampire is throwing them the ball? No. Uh, the Bears give up 21.7 fancy points this in This game's total. indoors, right? It is indoors. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Sun. Sunlight. Sunlight. Yeah. It would be – that's the only thing that's going to hurt him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this. Look, look let's say that uh, Jeff Driscoll is out there. He gets a start. It's, this is already a matchup I don't love for wide receivers. I don't love either of these wide receivers with Jeff Driscoll. Yeah, he's gotten the job done enough in certain weeks. One week for Kenny Galladay, a couple of weeks for Marvin Jones, but it's it's really been a dangerous ride. Um, so if I can pivot off of the wide receivers in this matchup, I mean Vegas has this thing at thirty-eight points. Go. This isn't a game I want my my you know entry into the playoffs hinging on. I w- I will just remind you that the Jeff Driscoll's first game was against Chicago. And, sure, and the, and, and he surprised everyone. Yeah. And Kenny Galladay got the late touchdown and, save. And Marvin was five for seventy-seven, and that was in Chicago. This sure. thing, like I don't think it's dire straits here for the, the Lions wide receivers if Driscoll plays. All right. Uh, well, let me ask you this, Mike. Adam Thielen coming back or Kenny Galladay? With with the Vampire or Driscoll? With Driscoll. I think Driscoll's going to be out there. Then uh, Adam Thielen. Yeah, I'm Adam Thielen. <laughs> I was going to say I'm Adam Thielen in all situations there. All right. Uh, good news for you, Jason. A little breaking news. Nelson Aguilar and Alshon Jeffrey both practicing in full on Wednesday. <laughs> They hope whoa, to combine whoa, whoa. forces and become one competent, healthy wide oh, that'd receiver. Be awesome! I like that. Uh, how much confidence you have in Nelson Aguilar? I like desperate having, times, Mike. <laughs> my, my comparison here is Jordan Matthews or Nelson Aguilar, and I will take Aguilar over Jordan Matthews. That's fair. You prefer watching him drop the ball than Jordan Matthews drop the ball. Yes. All right. I do, I do too. Bills eight and three at the Cowboys Thursday game. Thanksgiving Day Cowboy matchup. Cowboys have an implied point total of 26 points. The Bills at 19. Puts the Cowboys at seven-point favorites. It's a 45.5 point over-under. And I think there are lots of question marks in this game. Mm-hmm. We, you know, the Bills have been playing well. They have a very good defense. Do they travel here on Thanksgiving short week? And are they able to hold back Dak and company, who have been excellent at home? They, you know, yards per game wise, Dak is leading the NFL. This is one of the best scoring offenses. So push coming to shove here. I like the Cowboys players in this matchup. You're never benching Zeke, so he's in your lineup. But there are question marks around. You know, you're probably not uh, you're probably not benching Amari Cooper at all. But Gallup, Cobb, Prescott. What do you think? Yeah, Tredavious White is a tough matchup for Cooper. You're you're right. You're probably not benching him. Obviously, if you took that um, stance last week and benched Amari Cooper in, in bad weather and a bad matchup, you were thrilled. But we've talked about Cooper's home road splits being very significant. This game is at home, and the short week where the Bills have to travel gives you hope for Amari Cooper. Like I said, I moved him down to about wide receiver 20. So could you bench him? Yes. But that'd be great if you could, because that means you've got three great options. But if you don't, then that is a wide receiver that should be started. I don't think he's going to get shut out, but I certainly don't expect a big monster game from him here. Uh, the other options, Gallup has been pretty serviceable, and if he doesn't have Tredavious White, then then Gallup, I think, is going to be... I see those two as almost near plays, uh, you know, very similar to each other. Um, I would... Based on history, if I had both those guys, I'd probably still start Cooper, right. which feels illogical. No, I mean, Coop, there are very few players that have the upside and high end that Amari Cooper has where he can win you a week against anybody. And at home, you know, his performances have been very good. He's still the wide receiver six on the year. So 
I just don't see how I could sit him down with the upside that he provides your team because he's he's a kind of guy that can go two hundred and two. Yeah, but I'm yeah. still playing Cooper. Yeah, but with that attitude, right? Yes, I, you have to say, have that voice. That's and that's I stand by this. Um, any other question marks on that side of the ball? Mm. John Brown's been great over the last, uh, well, really the whole season, but coming through with big plays. Josh Allen on the road here. Uh, what kind of performance are we going to get from him? That's what I wanted to ask about Josh Allen. Dallas has the highest pressure rate in the NFL, and Josh Allen is one of the worst quarterbacks uh, as far as passer rating and completion percentage when under pressure. Under pressure. I was waiting for it. I was uh -huh. just waiting for you to say it. But does that okay. cause him to run more? Does that you know he's also one of the most mobile quarterbacks in the league. So if he's under pressure, does he scramble and end up with a thirty-yard run, which is like throwing for two hundred yards? It, it's yeah. I was gonna say it's a double-edged thing. If he chooses to throw the ball under pressure, he's not been great. But he has weapons downfield. He's got a guy that can win in one-on-one -on -one coverage. And John Brown and Josh Allen has earned this start for me in my fantasy roster. Okay, uh, Devin Singletary. Averaging 5.9 yards per carry. Hasn't gotten into the end zone recently, but I'm playing him in this game against He's Dallas. Like, he feels like the most productive yet unproductive fantasy player right now. He's Where, basically David he, Montgomery, except for he looks good and he's got great yards per carry, but still doesn't get into the end zone. That's what I mean. Like 15 for 75. Like, that's great. That's a great day. Except 20, you're disappointed with it fantasy-wise. 21 for 106 on the ground. Like, this, these are great numbers. And The problem is he's only had one reception each of the last two games, but you cannot, you can't look at that and say, well, you know, he's, he's not a passing downs back because – you know, prior to that, six targets, four targets, six targets. It just hasn't happened the last two. I, I still really like Singletary. I'm I'm playing him in this matchup. Yeah, I agree with you. And he has been the passing downs back. He's been on there, just not had the receptions. Cole Beasley, John Brown's going to be in your lineup. But Cole Beasley, last week, six for 76 and one. Do you buy into this revenge game narrative for Cole Beasley? Because we saw Jarvis Landry absolutely smash it against Miami last yeah. week. Does Beasley get a few more opportunities than normal uh, as the as they try to keep up? He he might, but not just because of the revenge, but because of the pressure rate. Where Cole Beasley is the short yardage slot wide receiver, Josh Allen may have to check down to Cole Beasley more than he wants to, because Josh Allen's DNA is he wants to throw the ball as far as he can. But Beasley's interesting. But he has never finished in the top. Uh, 25 except for this past week. That yeah, was the first yeah, time his, all year. His ceiling is incredibly limited. Like So very similar type players in their offenses. Would you rather play Colt Beasley or would you rather play Randall Cobb who's had at least 86 yards in the last three games? Definitely Randall Cobb out of right. those two. I think the upside is there. Cole Beasley's not exciting. While we talk about Buffalo's pass defense being great and Tredavious White locking down the number one, the Dallas Cowboys defense is really good. They're sure. they're number four against wide receivers. So if you're talking about, okay, here's a really good defense that doesn't give it up to the wide receiver position a lot, and then you're like, well, I want to go with this guy who doesn't get long you know, passes, and maybe he'll get six for 54. Oh, I, oh <laughs> six for 55. <laughs> you got me edgy, man. I know, but that's good. I would rather you hit the button than not hit the button. Yeah, I, um, You know, it's just one of those things where you, you, you look at Cole Beasley's game log all year. He's been involved. He's had targets, but you're not happy with the vast majority of these games unless he gets a touchdown. And I just don't see, you know, I'm not going to put the odds on the favor of him getting a touchdown against Dallas. Yeah, I think what happens with Cole Beasley is that fantasy betrays reality for him all the time. Like we all know and acknowledge that Cole Beasley is like a, an asset to an offense, whether it was with Dallas or Buffalo. Right. And we feel like he deserves the respect. And you watch what happens, and then you go look at the stat sheet, and you're like, well, that, really, that didn't do much for my team. Sure. Right. And the, the last kind of note for me on this game is Dawson Knox. I don't want to play him necessarily in season long, but there are special Turkey Day things happening in DFS. Like if you're playing over on FanDuel, and the Dallas Cowboys does give it up to the tight end. They're 25th against that position. So Dawson Knox, I think, is in play as a as a cheaper option if you're playing that slate. All right, this is an interesting matchup. The New Orleans Saints at 9-2 and two take on the Atlanta Falcons in Atlanta. The Falcons are 3-8. and eight, And the over-under in this game is 48.5 points. Now, Saints are seven-point favorites. 
Uh, Kyle, our editor, brought up four out of the last five games in this rivalry. It's hit the under. But division we've had big game, boy yeah. games in the past, too, and these division games are difficult to predict. We've seen the Falcons' defense step up in two out of the last three games in a big way. Uh, they are at home. There's pride in the division. Mike, you were saying yesterday, I think in the footcast, we yeah. said, like, you know, these divisional games are weird 80% of the time. That was how you handicapped it. It was a it. really arbitrary number I threw out. 74.9% <laughs> statistically. That's much more accurate. But – it does make this game interesting because uh, it's it's easy to kind of imbue the Falcons' offense with kind of you know that over under and the high flying capabilities that they have with Ridley and Julio and is, company. Is, but, who, what, is Julio Jones playing? And the, the last time these guys played, which was a few weeks ago, it was in New Orleans. But Matt Ryan, 182 passing yards with two touchdowns and, and an interception. I mean, not a great fantasy day well let's, let's start there mike is All he right. a play at home in this game people got really burned by him last week probably yeah. lost if you started him what do you think i i feel like i'm pulling a jason here but julio jones matters so much to i agree Matt ryan I, I i get that calvin ridley is a nice wide receiver who's emerging and could be a great player in years to come but you take the alpha number one wide receiver away from Matt Ryan and bad things happen. And Austin Hooper still gone as well. Like I, I will be out on Matt Ryan. If Julio Jones is, is not playing and Julio Jones did not practice on Tuesday, not great news for a game that's on Thursday. So Matt Ryan is very much, you, you better be paying attention to the news in your Turkey coma. Yes. Sam Darnold. Against Cincinnati or Matt Ryan, even with with Julio back. If if Julio's there, I'll play Matt Ryan. Yeah, I think so. But too. But if Julio Jones is out, I will pivot away to Sam Darnold. Um, Sam Darnold or Ryan Tannehill. Oh, uh, okay. Give me the we give me the. It's Tannehill a very one. weird question in the middle of a Saints Falcons matchup. Specific I, look, question. I, <laughs> didn't even want to wait for the other matchup. He I, just we're running up against a waiver wire clock. I've got to have your advice, Sam Darnold. On the road in Cincinnati, or Ryan Tannehill, who's been hot fire. Of course, Sam, Sam Darnold has also been hot fire. In a dome against Indianapolis in Indy. I would play Darnold. <laughs> this is a waiver wire clock question. <laughs> yes. Here, here's something worth mentioning. Marshawn Lattimore practiced yesterday, whereas Julio didn't. Marshawn Lattimore has been one of the best corners, shut down corners in the league. If you have a limited Julio and a little bit of Lattimore on top. Yeah. That could be uh, that could be a problem. Drew Brees on the other side. Uh, you're playing Drew Brees. Yes, you you're are playing him. Alvin Kamara. Mm. We getting Super Camario this week. What do you think? I think we are getting Super Camario. I I brought it up um, in whatever show. I think it was our Footcast yesterday. Uh, for all the supporters that join the Foot, thank you. Where um, we we talked about Camara. And we were on a little bit different sides because it was uh, I don't I don't remember the question, but it was Camara versus another really uh, great Fournette. Yeah, Fournette. And I just wanted to point out that I I think the injury that has happened here in the middle of the year that took some games away, including the games he was in, both uh, when he got injured and when he came back and was limited, has kind of masked the fact that Alvin Kamara is phenomenal. He's t he's top tier. He's he's Dalvin Cook and Christian McCaffrey. Level. Is he though? Well, and so that's that's the question everybody's asking. I believe the answer is yes. So that's what I'm saying is I expect to have a great performance from Kamara. Yeah, it's hard to doubt Alvin Kamara. I mean, he he managed to put up a you know top ten week the last two weeks, heading into out of, out of nowhere too last yeah, week. I mean, he yeah. was shut down I think for an entire half before the injury. He was 26th, 19th, and 23rd in those three games. But he's Alvin Kamara. You don't question playing him and he can always give you an absolute you know smash game because of his receiving prowess i think the bigger question is that you're playing Kamara. like yeah we don't need to argue about Kamara, but are you going to play are you going to flex in latavius murray like well, maybe you're looking at both scarborough the bow flex or latavius murray last week only seven carries but 64 yards with the touchdown He's he's been in on about forty percent of snaps the past couple of weeks with Alvin Kamara returning to the starting role. 
I don't. I think I'm going to try to find another option. Okay. Because I think the bottom end of Latavius Murray is it's what you saw against Atlanta and Tampa the previous two weeks. Yes, he had the big breakaway last week, but the the two weeks before he's outside the top forty at the position. I, that just scares me. Yeah. A little bit. But he, you know, he's always got a shot on a great offense. Just scares me. Devonta Freeman. We talked about him. I'd play Devonta Freeman if he's active over a guy like Bo Scarborough. Yeah, I would too. The matchup stinks. Saints fourth against fantasy running backs, and Freeman coming off of the injury. I'm I'm kind of in the middle with of between you and Jason. Where I'm I out. I don't want to play him, but at, you're probably backed into playing him. You're out, Jay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm you're not out on for, Freeman. I'm out on Freeman. All right, Michael Thomas. David Montgomery. I recommend David everybody Montgomery. play okay. Michael Thomas this week. You guys agree? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I Hold on. Yeah, he, my rankings say I would start him. Okay. Jason, Darius Geis Ooh, or that's Devonta interesting, Freeman. interesting. Because, I mean, these are the, people aren't making decisions. No. Like, Should I play Melvin Gordon the or matchup, Devonta Freeman? The matchup for Washington is unbelievable, but I just can't. I can't get on board with that with AP and Geis splitting, so there I would go Freeman. Jamal Williams. Yeah, I'll play. I'll or play Freeman. Freeman. We've seen nothing from Hill at all, so I, I'm not worried about timeshare. Like if Freeman's back, he's just going to get it all. That's what I think. Yeah, and I and I worry about the matchup and re-injury. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so what, I would go Jamal call? Williams. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, by the way, this is kind of crazy. Top five players in receiving yards in the NFL. They're all from this NFC South. Number one's Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas. 1,242 yards. Then Godwin, Evans, Julio, and DJ Moore, who's had a breakout season. So, yeah, I, I'll play Michael Thomas this week. Julio, pay attention. If you have me handicapped like we do in or out, if you have me in or out right now, I think he's playing the game. I think he's in. I lean that way, but it's if he's, troublesome. Yeah, as you see, there, I, there's no way he's going to practice with any injury on a Tuesday for a Thursday game. He's just going to get that time. Doesn't need to practice. He's Julio. But uh, it could be not what you want, regardless of whether he plays, because of Lattimore and, right. and the re-injury risk. That's a really tough decision. Lattimore against a hobbled Julio is a little scary. Is he so, hobbled with his shoulder? Yeah, well, I, I think uh, a, a he's injured. He's, he's uh, not full strength. Can't, is what I mean. can't walk on his hands. So if Julio is out, do you play Russell Gage? Yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah, he'll just PPR his way to uh, – play him over Beasley, probably. I yeah. would definitely. All right, and Jared Cook is in. Jared Cook has been sneaky good. Uh, he's, in fact, been a, a top 12 wide or tight end his last five games. There's, there was a break in there because he was hurt, but Jared Cook has really stepped into this offense. He's a must start. I mean, I think if you he have for me. Jared Cook, like I was going to make him my start of the week, but I felt like – if you have Jared Cook, you're starting him, right? Yeah, it, it's, it's not a decision anymore. And it's reliability and trust. Watch what Drew Brees has been doing. He he throws the ball to Ted Ginn, and he's dropping easy targets. Uh, Traquan is not reliable enough, and here's Jared Cook getting in zone targets, skying to the moon for poor targets. Yes. I mean, the, the the touchdown he grabbed was excellent. The the long bomb across the middle this past week was excellent. He's he's playing great. Yep, week ten Atlanta. Beat New Orleans uh, twenty six to nine. That was the start of their great defense. Breeze was <laughs> Breeze was sacked six times in that game. That just shows you not that it's predictive for goodness sakes, right? But it just shows you what can happen in these divisional games when Atlanta seemed like a smash play for everybody, and all Saints fans and all Saints fantasy owners were like, "What? What? What just happened? What happened? That's why Vegas wins money. I see." Starts of the week. All right, before we get into the rest of the matchups for Week 13, we're going to jump right in right now to the starts of the week. Jason has a smirky face. Mm. I don't know why. Is this based on the starts of the week? The, it the, is. The picks? Do it you want is. to start for us? So wait. Oh, this, my God. This is your, did you pivot or is this No, th this was already my start. Then I, how were you asking this question? T-I-L-T. <laughs> yes. Uh, I am tilting. Uh, important big game matchup. I just won a, a very difficult matchup against Al Borland on the back of the Ryan Tannehill, A.J. Brown stack. And, a, you know, Ryan Tannehill's been solid. He was my streamer. This He's my stream of the week, right? But my start of the week this week is, in fact, the guy that 
Um, I am considering making a waiver claim on, which is Sam Darnold on the road in Cincinnati. One of the things that I love is that Andy Dalton is playing. Uh, th this could end up being a game. I mean, you talked about maybe Cincinnati gets their first win. If they're scoring on the Jets, which is decently easy to do, then Donald's going to have to throw the ball and come back. And the reality is Donald's been very good lately. I mean, you look at his last few games, he's he's running the ball in some of those games, has two different rushing touchdowns. He's uh, thrown for as many as four touchdowns in a game. He's had big blow up. Uh, and, you know, games, and he's got weapons, right? I mean, Crowder's a go-to guy if he needs him. Robbie Anderson is a great streaming option this week off of waivers because of this matchup. Uh, Ryan Griffin has kind of come uh, into his own as a pass-catching option, and the matchup against Cincinnati is phenomenal. So I, I think Sam Darnold is a guy you want to stay in the flames with. You look at the last three weeks, he's been great for fantasy. You look at the matchup. It's great. There's no weather condition problems expected in this game. So I love Sam Darnold, and um, that's all I can say. All right. I'm going to go hashtag risky business here. Oh. Uh, we, we've kind of titled Jason that in recent weeks about some of his, his riskier selections. Uh, may or may not have created a little animated gif with you uh, mm -hmm. on the body of Tom Cruise in that risky business. That was for the O.J. Howard star. Yes. Which worked. Yeah, it did. So I'm going Jared Goff, start of the week at Arizona. I know it's been ugly for Jared Goff, but believe it or not, he has five top 12 performances on the year. Maybe that's shocking. To me, he's a lock as a top 10 this week. He has Woods, Cup, Cooks. They're all active, healthy. The team needs a W. And Arizona, when you play Arizona... That is a, a sweet balm of fantasy points. Uh, yeah. You just – whatever's ailing you, they have a way to fix it. There have been only two games through 12 weeks that have not been top 10 performances for their – for the quarterbacks that they're facing, including the last four games. If you're an opposing quarterback, you play Arizona, the light comes on, and you're happy. So Jared Goff, who's out there probably in a lot of leagues – He's my start of the week. I love it. In my start of the week, I'm going with Jacksonville Jaguars' Nick Foles. He is a, basically like an honorary streamer, but I, I wanted to bring him up here that I like him. I really like the matchup. Even with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers holding Matt Ryan down over the last five weeks, they're still allowing the second most points to the quarterback position. Division game, weird, and then they ended up still giving up fantasy points because Matt Schaub came in and threw a nice touchdown to Calvin Ridley. And for example, I like Nick Foles. I will play Nick Foles this week over Tom Brady. I will play him over Deshaun Watson, who is Ooh. playing the Patriots. And I will play him over Jason's favorite player of all time, Carson Wentz. Well, that one's stupid. That's his my guy. Um, so you're going with <laughs> Nick yes. Foles. The, 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 the matchup there. against the Buccaneers is is – preposterous like dj chark should uh bounce back in a big I way i would trade him to you so he can be one of your my guys but all your guys are on ir mm. i gotta activate him before i can trade him that's that's correct gotcha. <laughs> all right invalid roster the nick Foles call is a it's a funny one mike because when you you've brought him up earlier in the week inside i've kind of cringed every time you said it yep and yet i see the matchup and i'm like how does it not happen it's the same thing with Jared Goff against Arizona. Like, Arizona in Tampa Bay, quarterbacks just put up points. I know, but then it makes you look at D.D. Westbrook. It makes you look at other play. Uh, D.J. Chark is a smash yeah, play. Well, Chark is an auto star. Yeah, but we'll, we'll break that. All right, Jason, down. running back start of the week. Oh, dear. Oh, my. Here yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm basically doing exactly what you are doing with Jared Goff in the same game against the same matchup. I'm saying Todd Gurley is my start of the week. It was – horrific last week 19 total yards against the Ravens but don't let that oh, oh yeah. that was for Jared Goff I was just a little, I was just a little late <laughs> better better late I than never I just missed it Brooks is he's nodding he's like yes he got it in sweet uh, look history will remember that I got it in you know a couple weeks prior you saw the, the what the Rams wanted to do they had 25 carries to Todd Gurley you finally got it going had a very good fantasy game and then this past week they ran up against the Baltimore Ravens who torched them they I mean Todd Gurley only had six carries in the game because you were down 
40 to nothing. You you didn't have the opportunity to run anymore in that game against Arizona, who over the last five weeks, according to our stream finder tool, is the third best matchup uh, for your running back or third worst against running back. However you look at it, it's the same thing. This is a great matchup for him. He's obviously got fresh legs, only six carries last week. Um, I, I just think he's going to do very well in this game. Arizona, their offense has gotten it together. They're coming off the bye. I expect them to be able to score on the Rams, and uh, I think that the you know this will be a game that hits the over, and I like Goff. I like Gurley. Maybe it'll be a pass to Gurley, um, but I don't want you to be scared from last week the horrific game against the Ravens and think that's the new norm, especially against the Cardinals. You know what's wild is Todd Gurley had the six carries, three targets, three receptions, so nine total touches, and that was his season high in snaps. Yeah, he the was snap, out there. He was out there for 96% of the snaps. What are you, why? Every, what are you it, doing? It was one of those Phillip Rivers a couple weeks ago or Carson Wentz this last week where when you're down big, every play – He's trying to find a deep ball to someone, and he's not looking at the running back at all. I'm which saying is, what's, what's weird is it feels like the Rams have been managing Todd Gurley the entire season. Well, maybe it's a good sign to Jason's point. Yeah, and the, and then they're in a blowout, and they're like, no, Todd Gurley, you need to get back out there. Go win the game. All right, my running back start of the week, I'm going with Josh Jacobs against Kansas City. It was rough last week for all Oakland Raiders, including Josh Jacobs. That It looked like a smash play. But Kansas City is a wonderful matchup. Josh Jacobs, prior to last week, was averaging 23.1 touches per game, the fifth most in the NFL since week four. And the last four backfields that have faced the Chiefs, well, they finished first, sixth, fifth, and fifth on the week in fantasy points. The opportunity should be there. He's one of the, you know, Hunter Renfro's gone. Maybe you see a little bit more passing game involvement. He also leads all running backs in forced missed tackles. This is the way they want to win the ball game. That will be the recipe for them to beat Kansas City. I think Josh Jacobs is a, uh, a yeah. smart play this week. Yeah, I like him a lot. And my running back start of the week, I'm going to go a little bit riskier business here because he's more like a lower-end running back too, but I think he has upside this week. I'm going with Ronald Jones. Looked good on film last week. He he looked, yes. And it's just it's been strange with what's going on with the Tampa Bay running back situation. But Ronald Jones continues to look like the best running back on the team. And the matchup against Jacksonville, or Jacksonville, they've kind of fallen apart now. Three straight weeks, they've given up top four fantasy points to the running back position. We're talking about Derrick Henry, and not just Derrick Henry, who destroys the Jacksonville souls, but Jonathan Williams slash Marlon Mack, the Houston running backs. People are running, and they're running well with great success against the Jaguars right now. So I, I, I like Ronald Jones to be in there as a running back, too. This game is basically a heads up. I think Jacksonville's favored by a point at home against Tampa. I know we talked a little bit about game script and who we think is going to win it. I'm on the side. I think Tampa is going to blow Jacksonville out. I think so. Mm -hmm. That would lend itself towards Ronald more Jones, yeah. running game work. Uh, and Nick it, Foles having to throw the ball. Exactly. So I like both of your picks. They seem risky, but I don't think they are. Jason, you want to give us your wide receiver? My wide receiver start of the week is in a tough matchup. It's Jarvis Landry against Pittsburgh. And the reason that I am uh, having him as my start of the week is because he has been incredible. I don't people care. are scared off of the number two performance this yeah, week. No, no, no. That's but the, the or point the here, number seventeen the previous. Well, this week. is this is what I'm saying. The last ten weeks, Jarvis Landry is the wide receiver ten. The last five weeks, he's the wide receiver two. The last three weeks, he's the wide receiver one. He's great. Yeah. He is the number one. We've been joking. He's the number one on the Browns. No, but it's not a joke. He is the number one wide receiver for Baker. Odell Beckham is the number two wide receiver. They don't have the chemistry when, you know, it doesn't matter the target count because there's actual rapport with Jarvis Landry. I am not scared off of the Pittsburgh Steelers matchup here. I think Jarvis Landry goes out and just continues to be fire and have a great game, get in the end zone again. I'm absolutely starting Jarvis Landry everywhere, and I think he has a, I think he has a phenomenal game. All right, I'm going to go with Tyler Boyd, wide receiver for wow. the Cincinnati Bengals. Oh, Dalton is back. Yeah, You're right. Andy Dalton is back, baby, which You're I right. never thought I'd say in that way. <laughs> <laughs> but, boy, you want to look nice, Andy Dalton? Come on back now after what Ryan Finley did. Here's the thing. Tyler Boyd is good. 
He's a good player. He went five for 101 and one last week with Finley throwing him horizontal rotating duck balls into the air. It's a strange technique. It is. He just goes with it. Uh, but Boyd is a good player. And he's averaging 10.4 targets a game with Andy Dalton. That is an insane amount of targets. And the Jets, uh, look, on the road, they've given up huge points to the wide receiver position whenever they faced a really bad team. I think we all agree Cincinnati's a very bad team. Well, Miami put up 40-plus. Their wide receivers did. The Giants put up 50-plus against the Jets. Yes, the Jets are playing better but I, I like Cincinnati to get their first W this week at home, and I think Tyler Boyd's going to play a big part. And I've got DK Metcalf from the Seattle Seahawks. Ooh. Look, they are back at home. The Minnesota matchup is one that still oh it still carries fear when you see, oh, crap, my wide receivers are playing against Minnesota just because of what they have been in the past. They are not that anymore. Xavier Rhodes, it used to be Rhodes closed, and now he is the Autobahn for fantasy oh, points well for wide receivers. The last seven weeks, Minnesota is allowing nearly 37 fantasy points per game to the wide receiver position. That's second most over that span. They get beat there. That's the buyer sell where you were surprised I bought Russell Wilson as a top 10 guy. This is why. You can pass on the Minnesota Vikings. So I really like DK Metcalf this week. I – I love all your starts. Oh, yeah. Turk Day. Very thankful for them. Mm, mm, mm. And you will be, too. All right, Jason. Tight end. Tight end. I'm sticking with the old man, Greg Olson, who's getting it done. Top 10, two of the last three weeks. Of course, the Kyle Allen collapse in the middle. I don't think Kyle Allen collapse this week against the <laughs> – I don't think Kyle Allen collapses either. This I know collapse. <laughs> this – this week, I know collapse again. <laughs> the Washington Redskins beep, bop, boop, are not beep. going to shut down <laughs> Kyle Allen. And if they don't, then Greg Olson's going to have a fine game. Washington specifically, in the last two games, they've almost given up 40 fantasy points to the tight end position. I think Greg Olson is uh, safe. Uh, we call him a uh, good old reliable. Uh, yes. Old reliable. Greg yeah. Olson. Ooh, oh, uh, very nice. well done. It's, it's, it's right there. It's really not a tough one. I no, didn't have to was, think that long. Was, that, that, you didn't need to I go. just threw a D in there. <laughs> That's all I did. Greg Olson. No, no, we're moving on. I'll go look at you. All right. Darren Waller returns. That's what's going to happen this week, guys. Darren Waller, it's been, well, not what you got to start the year. But Kansas City has given up the sixth most fantasy points to the tight end. And you look uh, you look recently, three consecutive top ten performances to opposing tight ends. Kansas City gives up the highest opposing tight end market share. And we talked, Hunter Renfro is gone. He yeah, is out. It's, it's a big deal. He's a five-plus target a week guy. And if you look at those targets, they're all in the – his average depth of the target was 7.5 yards. Well, the next closest player on that team – it's Waller at the nine-yard mark. That's where he was siphoning targets yep. away. It's just going to be hard for Kansas City to stop Darren Waller. And if Mahomes goes to work, then this team is going to be throwing the ball a lot. So I think Waller has a PPR opportunity. And I've got Dallas Goddard. This is simply like uh, it, the bounce back will happen. He still had eight targets this past week. It, it didn't come through with a good fantasy performance. But I'm still in on Dallas Goddard. I'm still on. In Got on yeah, I'm still in on him being uh, a a one of the better options at the tight end position. The matchup is strong, and I don't believe in the wide receiver weapons nor their health right now for the Philadelphia Eagles. I think they will have to rely on Ertz and Goddard a, a, at least another week. Yeah, I think what Jason's brought it up. Whenever you play Dallas Goddard, you have something built in on the upside side. You know, I don't I don't feel that with Jack Doyle. But with Dallas Goddard, you have the opportunity. Um, if J if Jason's my guy, Carson Wentz ends up throwing a few touchdowns, then <laughs> Goddard's has got as good of a chance as anybody else. Jason, have you prepared yourself for our uh, next segment? <clears throat> me, me, me. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. This Thanksgiving week, there's no need to be delicate. 
Just smash your opponent with the Eagles' Jake Elliott. I don't know, man. I I'm, I'm down. Delicate Elliot. No, I, I'm great. It sounds okay to me. Hunt it really home run. It's more of a lyrical rhyme. I mean, it came together. Oh right? yeah. I don't think anybody out there was. Now you might be reading it and say like, eh, I don't know. But people listening were like, heck yeah, man, that was awesome. Yeah, that's I, what everybody said out there. I, okay. Every all uh, <laughs> unanimous. <laughs> judge, this judge, you were just listening. Now, the only problem that I have with this, Jason, is you said this Thanksgiving there's no need to be delicate, mm -hmm. but he plays on Sunday. Well, so that's I why I change, I, it. I change it. I change it. I said this Thanksgiving week. Oh, no. It's written this Thanksgiving. Oh, you did but change But I realized that, okay. and so I said this Thanksgiving week. What What recognition? <laughs> that's yeah. a great audible. Mm. Uh, also, did you know that Sunday is not in the Thanksgiving week? Because that will, in fact, be the start of next week. Is Sunday the start of the week? Yes. That's the way it's viewed? Which one's yes. closer there's, no, there's, am, I, am I a crazy person? Well, there's a lot of calendars that come out, and they have Saturday on one end and Sunday on the other, or they have Saturday, Sunday on the end of the week. Those are special calendars, but Sunday is the first day of the week. Yeah, I think you're is right. It, hold on. Me, That's I, how I look at it. That's how I've always looked at forgive it. Forgive my stupidity. Yeah, Brooks, Sunday's you've always seen it the way. Al Borland, do you not if you uh, crash into a javelina? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, do you also agree with the Sunday live thing? Okay, so for you, Al Borland, is Monday the first day of the week? He's nodding yes. All right. well, here, we need to get you a microphone. Look, I think that we've gotten to the point where we can afford this. Wait, do you have the microphone? Is it working? He's nodding he's no. Not, he's nodding okay. no? <laughs> he's not. Well, he's got a giant microphone right in front of his face that doesn't do anything. It's not a cheap microphone Then why did either. he nod? Wouldn't Be it? Because it doesn't work. The microphone does not work. He, that's why he's nodding. This um, is yes. But here's the if, thing. If you Google it, if you Google it, the the big result, which Google The often, big result. Oh, I'd say like the first result where okay. sometimes it's wrong, but Monday is the first day of the week okay. according to the international standard, but in the U.S., Canada, and Japan, it's counted as the second day okay. of the week. Let me ask you this. I'm sorry. I thought this was America. Uh, let me ask you this, Mike. When is... Thanksgiving weekend. Which, which weekend is Thanksgiving Ooh, weekend? Ooh, solid mm. point. Hmm? Is it last solid weekend? Solid point. No, it's this coming weekend, the, and this Sunday is part of that. So this <laughs> Thanksgiving weekend is when uh, Jake Elliott is going to smash. When Jake Elliott is going to smash. Smash play. You're welcome. Don't America. forget, America. We're, we're going to get back into uh, the full fantasy forecast momentarily. But you said week. Hang tight end. through the end of the show. <laughs> we're going to drop a, a hashtag for you. Which will uh, enter you into a little contest to win some cool Ooh. stuff, and I think we've got the hashtag figured out. We do. I think we. Uh, I know we have the hashtag figured out. So we'll share that at the end. If you can make it through, hopefully you got some sleep, you've eaten well. We've got a whole lot of show coming up. Fantasy forecast. All right, let's kick update. What, what's the update? Update waivers ran. Update waivers ran. Oh, so you're uh, the waivers for our league. Yes, I did. In Real fact, important. Thank you. It is. I got Sam Darnold, but more importantly, I also got Robbie Anderson. So I will be rocking the mm. Darnold Robbie Anderson oh, stack. Oh, much like your Tannehill AJ Brown stack from last week. That is right. Who's coming with me? That's it's not a bad stack this yep. week. I bet we'll talk about it. Okay. The Eagles. At five and six, take on the Miami Dolphins, who are two and nine. The Eagles are nine point road favorites. It's a forty five point over under. And we have talked at length about Carson Wentz, and there's just so much on the line for him in this game. Last week it was difficult because most of the, you know, Twitter spheres, social media reaction, it was so negative about Carson Wentz, and you look and you say, Well, Jordan Howard, who by the way, Still not cleared for contact. Mm -hmm. But you didn't have Jordan Howard. Can't establish that run game with him. Didn't have Lane Johnson. Kind of important. For the offensive line, very important piece. Didn't have Alshon Jeffrey. Mm -mm. Didn't have Nelson Aguilar. Nope. DJX on IR. Yeah, and then... Uh, Still. You, but yes. the problem was, is Wentz played bad on top of it. It wasn't just... The answer it was, is yes. It was bad decision making. It was uh, you know bad reads, taking Inaccurate. sacks four turnovers so it was a it was really 
an eyesore of a game for Carson Wentz in all respects. Some his fault, some not, but nevertheless. Here we are in what on paper should be a must-play matchup. Dolphins are 30th against fantasy quarterbacks. They've been decimated in the last couple of weeks after winning a couple games. Eagles are heavy favorites on the road. Weather shouldn't be a factor. It's going to be clear and wonderful. Which, which so, it is worth also pointing out since we're talking about the hardships that happened last week. Part of the issue for yeah, that weather. game was weather. There was some light rain, some sleet, some wind. And so, the hand. And the hand injury. Right. So it's a ton of variables, some of which seem to be being taken out. You know, Alshon Aguilar expected to be back. The hand is still there. The weather still is Still has taken his out. hand. Still has a hand. Ooh, no Lannister situation? No, oh, Lannister would be such a bad quarterback <laughs> post situation. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, so... Everything in the matchup says, okay, you play him. Everything in the momentum of the of the offense says, pump the brakes. And so there you are with that decision. And, and in your case, and you're playing Sam Darnold over Carson Wentz, but you would have played Wentz over Ryan Tannehill. So everybody's trying to evaluate where the kind of streaming, lower-tier, non-auto smash play options are at quarterback, and that's where you landed. Is that fair? Yeah, that, that's exactly right. Right now, I've got Carson Wentz as my quarterback 15, which means I would like to do better than that. I want a top-12 quarterback. Um, that being said, I believe Wentz can be started this week. Uh, you know, I've got him at 15. That's kind of the the probability, the, the risk baked in. But he has the potential here to go out and have a monster game. I really genuinely believe that. Miami is a terrible defense. We all know that. Players, especially quarterbacks against Miami, they've they've lit it up. There's no weather concerns. His offensive line and weapons are back. So he I has, think he has a good game because if you look at his last stretch of games where he's been bad, it's been a really tough matchup of schedules. And then this last week, no weapons and bad weather. Yeah, I was going to say it's been a gauntlet in Dallas at Buffalo, Chicago, New England. That was a four-game stretch with different injuries on the team. So it has not been easy for Carson Wentz. I think we've talked about him enough. Ryan Fitzpatrick on the other side at home. You know he's going to be a gunslinger. You know he'll probably turn the ball over. I love Philadelphia's defense this week. They showed me something last week against Russell Wilson, and I love him. Miles Sanders, he showed me that he can play 85% of snaps and 84% of snaps and still make me – Wish he had more snaps. Yeah, somehow. <laughs> it Miles Sanders is tough. He's probably the the guy I've been uh, asked the most questions about on Twitter, and I th I think you play him, and I think you can play him with with a decent amount of confidence. He has been the guy. Eighty five percent of snaps, eighty four percent of snaps. Number not, nineteen last week. Not producing in a big way, but those tougher matchups have extended from Carson Wentz also to Miles Sanders. So. I would be playing Miles as a running back, too, this week. Miles Sanders, it was between Miles Sanders and Todd Gurley for my start of the week. I think there are a lot of things that bode well in his favor. Pro Football Focus has this as the biggest offensive versus defensive line discrepancy for running the ball. So I think that they're going to be able to create lanes for him. Um, I, I, I think Miles Sanders is a good play this week. Do you believe that Jay Ajayi is a sneaky DFS type of play this week at all? No. Okay. Well, maybe get some work if they were up. But you, you like Miami to potentially upset the Eagles I, in this game. I like Miami to cover. Okay, I, that's like fair. The Eagles favored by nine. I, I get it that Miami stinks and in, in the narrative and everything, and I bet people are still putting money on Eagles to cover because Miami stinks. But at in Miami with the way that the offense has been running for Philadelphia, I think they will cover. All right, Kalen Balazs, you can punt him off a bridge. I don't want him on my team. I don't want him in my lineup. Correct. He lost a ton of snaps last week. Uh, despite being, quote-unquote, the starter, he was not on the field, not involved in the passing game. All he had was volume. That is literally – Before. The, that was all he all he had, and now that's gone. So now he's, if you're tracking, that means he has nothing. That would make – He has nothing to offer. That him. would make Brooks the opposite of Kalen Balazs because oh. he has no volume. Well, now they're, the, now they're similar, though, because Kalen now has no volume. Oh, okay. Now, you are Kalen Balak. That's what we're getting I at. liked being the opposite of <laughs> Kalen Balak a lot better. <laughs> oh, but it hurts me to acknowledge how bad Balak is. He, he was a local guy. All right, uh, Jordan Howard's probably going to miss this game. 
Alshon Jeffrey, Nelson Aguilar are practicing. The matchup says this is a game that Jeffrey climbs back into your lineup. If he's active, he tends to demand very, very high target counts from Carson Wentz when he's active. I'm going to ask Jason a question. Because this entire show, we've been running through players returning from injury. Adam Thielen, Devonta Freeman. And you've been, oh, I'm I'm out. I don't want to play those guys. Mm -hmm. But somehow, Alshon, Jeffrey, and Nelson Aguilar, much lower tier players than, say, Adam Thielen, you're like they're they're the solution for Carson Wentz. Well, it's not it's not that I'm playing them. It's not okay. that I'm putting Alshon in the lineup and saying I'm banking on getting fantasy points from him. There's multiple options coming back, and I I view them as a benefit. Carson the, Wentz is the benefit. The group, yes, the the the, the group. The, Carson Wentz benefits from the health of all three players. I include Lane Johnson with that from from what we saw last. Let, right. let me ask you this though, because decisions are needing to be made. Jeffrey, because he has so much practice coming back from injury, we've seen this a lot where he comes back and picks up 10 to 12 targets from Carson Wentz. Do you wait on Jeffrey to be active? He's practicing. Do you play him or do you play like Marvin Jones on Thanksgiving? Marvin Jones with maybe Driscoll, Oof, maybe or, blah, uh, 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 or do you wait on Alshon against Miami? Ah, uh, that's tough. I, th I think that would completely depend on whether or not you have a good enough pivot. Because I would rather, if you knew, uh, you know, you know for sure Alshon is playing 100%, I would rather play Alshon than Marvin Jones because of the matchup and the quarterback injury issue for Detroit. But if I don't have a good pivot in case something happens pregame and Alshon's out, then, then no. So you look at your bench and say you've got, uh, I don't know, you've got, Mike Williams, you know, okay, then maybe I'll wait for Mike Williams. He's not playing uh, Thursday, right? Correct. So there you go. All right, Devontae Parker. You play him. You play him in this game? Yes, you do. I mean, I was looking at uh, – Eagles have gotten a little bit better against uh, – yeah, Yes, certainly. But Devontae Parker is just he – is, he has earned his way – into fantasy lineups. So he put up a great game against Buffalo where he, sh he had no business doing that. And I was looking up Parker's contract situation. Man, did the Miami, the Miami Dolphins pull the fast one here. They had a gamble and they won where next year he uh, has an option for $5 million, a club option. Mm. So if they want Parker, they've got him for $5 million. Yeah. Well, they nicely done, Miami. I don't think one soul on this earth said nicely done when that signed. No, happened. no, no, we did not. Yeah, but the the gamble paid off for them. I didn't mean you. I just meant everybody. I mean, everybody said, okay, this guy's shown nothing, but he's shown some things this year. He's your uh, Thanksgiving Day Jack in the Box pick. Yeah, he he. Here's the thing with him is he doesn't have monster games. He's not going to be a top five type of player. He hasn't been. Uh, you know, you look at this year, he's been great. He hasn't been top 10 once, and and I don't think that he he finishes top 10 the rest of the season. However, the lowest he's been since Vince Patrick took over is 35th, which 35th, you're not happy with the rank, but that's still a serviceable yep. game. So week in and week out, he's just a consistent guy that's in your flex, um, that has been putting up points, not goosing. He, he's too targeted by Fitzpatrick, who is capable even in bad matchups, I think you roll with them. Zach Ertz in your lineup, of course. And then Dallas Goddard, Mike, start of the week. He's going to be in your lineup. Gesicki did score last week. It's probably not somebody you're glancing at. Uh, Eagles pretty good against the tight end. And Gesicki, having played him in weeks past, you're just yeah. really you're just rolling the dice completely. Completely. All right, let's move on. The Jets at 4-7 and seven take on. The winless Cincinnati Bengals in Cincinnati. Jets are three and a half point favorites. It's a 41 and a half point over under, and it is my. Andy's almost upset of the week. Andy Dalton is back. And uh, that's, he is. that's that's the truth. That's the truth about it. Bengals last week, they were actually in a dogfight with Pittsburgh in that game. The Jets going on the road here, Cincinnati putting Dalton back in. They need to they need to try to stifle this historical effort that they're making. I don't they don't want to go winless. And uh they're not gonna have a lot of opportunities to not 
go winless. Andy Dalton coming back. Tyler Boyd, start of the week. Joe Mixon's been playing very well at the running back position. I think that they can get it done. Jets are favored. So Sam Darnold on the other side. Jason, he's your start of the week. I I I believe this game hits the over. I mean, you're talking 41 and a half is a decently low over under with Dalton there and Sam Darnold. These are two really bad defenses with I believe two capable quarterbacks. They're not world beaters, but when you have a matchup like this, I'm always intrigued and I like, you know, it it, it doesn't work out with 100% accuracy, but these are the type of matchups when you have decent quarterbacks against bad defenses where they can end up going back and forth. I still like the Jets in this game, uh, but you are good at calling your almost upsets. Well, we'll see. I mean, Andy Dalton, let's not forget, before he was benched arbitrarily on his own birthday, <laughs> which is still hard to believe, he was – the yardage numbers were there. I mean, he began the season with 418. Uh, he was consistently putting up 200 to 300 yards a game. He's going to sling the ball around. You like Darnold. I get it. Cincinnati's defense – pretty bad there should be opportunities on both sides of the ball for some fantasy points in this game do you know the new york jets have only allowed three top 12 quarterbacks this year i did not know that Mike. i did not know that. who, like, who are you, they who are they uh jacksonville miami and the giants so bad teams great but i'm just i'm just saying like, no it's interesting like when you said like the jets are a bad defense i don't they're not bad the jets are they are they aren't they aren't great, but I would say that they are an average defense at at worst. Like they can stop the run, and they're stopping quarterbacks. I mean, I yeah, I mean, it's I, I like the Jets to win the game. Speaking fantasy points wise, they're they're obvious, they're middle of the pack against quarterback, middle of the pack against running back, and well, they're no twelfth against fantasy 12th running would backs. be considered middle of the pack, right? You got thirty two teams, so you got top ten, middle ten. Bottom ten is how I view. It. Okay. Regardless, okay, sure. Uh, you know, and then and then they're they're twenty uh, sixth against wide receivers. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not. I guess maybe I'm painting too uh, generic of a picture to say that they're just a bad defense. But they have they have they're not a great defense. Is my point is is this isn't a team where I don't think Dalton can get it done. Obviously, uh, Andy's got Tyler Boyd as his start of the week. And, and again, 26th against wide receivers, that makes sense. I think points will be put on the board. If you look at Lev Bell the last four weeks, he's the running back 10, 10, 10, and 11. 220. So that's about where he's settling in there. He's on pace for 810 rushing yards at 3.2 a carry. Uh, yeah, I, this was, unfortunately. They did not the, get what they paid for. It's just hard to wade through it all. You're not wrong. They didn't get what they paid for. They're saying that same refrain with Adam Gase. They're saying that same refrain with Sam Darnold, I, to be honest. Yes, he's had a few good games. No, this was not the sophomore season they wanted from Sam Darnold from a winning uh, standpoint, from an on-the-field performance standpoint. So lots gone wrong there. Lev Bell has just been okay. He's not winning you weeks. No, he's he's been steady. But, I mean, just to compare how bad – uh, I mean, like high workload, but very, very inefficient. I mean, he is right in line with the 2016 Todd Gurley season, which, if you remember, I mean, Todd Gurley wasn't technically a bust that year, oh, but but he was technically a bust. He was a yeah. Where I mean, did everyone hated? Everyone yes. thought he was a bust that year because he was drafted super. He high. wasn't. He was the number one pick, which Le'Veon Bell was not the number one pick. Uh, so I guess in 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 that value ratio, yeah, he would have been a bust, but. He's just been there. Like I, I in my money league, I thought I was going to be able to, you know, have Le'Veon Bell carry my running back position, and he has not. No, and he hasn't had any of those upper echelon games, even to show you something during the season. That girly year, I think he had two or three games, even though he was a bust, where he had a monster performance. This could be one of those games, though. I mean, it the could. Bengals are very bad against running backs, and you know if. If you're going to predict your breakout games, this is probably one of those four or five matchups you'd you'd uh, highlight on the schedule. But, but wouldn't you highlight Oakland, Washington, the Giants, or in fact Miami, who they have already played? I said four or five, <laughs> so I'm sticking with it. How do you put the Jets 
wide receivers in order this week for fantasy purposes. Jamison Crowder, Robbie Anderson, Demarius Thomas. That's how I put him. That's how I put him as well. Rob, yeah. Robbie has the highest ceiling, but even with the yeah, – it was a down week for Jamison Crowder and Robbie went up. We haven't seen any type of consistency from Robbie. I'd like to play him in the matchup, but if I had – like they're both on my bench and I'm in a half point or full point PPR scoring format – and I'm playing to get in. I'm playing Crowder. I forgot Demarius had that touchdown called back on him he last did. week. Yeah, I think Crowder, Anderson, Thomas makes sense. That's the right order. And then uh, you know Ryan Griffin. He's, he's been he's a fine flyer. Yeah, he's been as consistent as you can get from somebody not of, in that upper of his line. ilk of his <laughs> <laughs> someone of his birth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on. The Titans at six and five take on the six and five Colts. This is a big game. This is a really big game. Colts at home, they're two and a half point favorites. It's a 43 point over under. The loser's going to fall behind in the AFC South race with the Texans. A lot on the line, divisional game. I've had a hard time working through how I think this one's going to play out. The Colts coming off a disappointing loss. The Titans coming off of a monstrous victory. Yeah, and the, you know, the Colts they're just kind of solid everywhere. They're they're Coaching staff is tremendous. Uh, Brissett is kind of a solid quarterback. Their defense is solid. The running game is solid. That's that's why it's hard to look at them and say, hey, they're not going to come out. Even when they were losing last week against Houston and you watched Brissett and the Hilton drops and all that, they just kind of stay with the process every week. Even when they were down, it was run, 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 pass, run, 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 pass. They just kind of do that, and they believe that their recipe is good enough to win most games. But I'm I'm looking at this matchup in the way that the you know the Tennessee Titans have been playing. Forty three point over under. Do you do you like the over or under? Let's start there. Do you I, think this game is going to deliver like, for fantasy owners? I like the under. I'll in take this the under. I'm think, with you guys. I think when you have a team led by Derrick Henry in a poor matchup for running backs, and he's been very good against running backs, that's, that's going to slow down the Tennessee. I side. wanted to highlight some numbers for Derrick Henry, and no, I'm not betting against Derrick Henry. That's a it seems like a fool's errand at this point. But to highlight how good the Colts have been, they've given up a, a – this is total team points to the to the running back position. Week one, they got torched by Austin Eckler, and they gave up the second most points. And then in week eight, they gave up tenth the, the tenth most points to fantasy running backs that week uh, to Denver. Other than that, it's been 16th or worse for oppositional running backs going up against this team. Like They've been very, very stout. They are – they are very stingy in when it comes to giving up fantasy points to running backs. So that hurts the Tennessee offense on one side. And on the flip side, uh, you have no Marlon Mack, possibly no T.Y. Hilton, and or injured T.Y. Hilton hobbled. And so I, I do expect this to be a more defensive, uh, lower scoring game, which I think, you know, if, if you believe that lens, you know, that that's par part of why I wanted to pivot off of my Ryan Tannehill, A.J. Brown stack that I played last week to glory. I am benching both of those players this week in my lineup. When you look at Jonathan Williams on the other side, you know, Tennessee is traveling to Indianapolis, and Indianapolis knows how to run the football. And last week, Tennessee gave up that monster performance to Leonard Fournette, which was the number four performance on the week. They've, they've had that here and there. I mean, Pretty much McCaffrey and uh, the Chargers running backs. Otherwise, they've been pretty stout. What's I nice, think Jonathan Williams is a play, though. I oh, think he's, he's, a, he's, he's absolutely a star. He is. To me, he's on basically a must play. The, the nice thing about the Colts is while Jonathan Williams is – he's a talented running back. It's pretty wild that he hasn't been able to get a job in the NFL. But betting on the Colts running game is betting on the, the Colts offensive line, which is like a look at Dallas. You put whoever. I, I don't care. You put someone – Alfred Morris. Put, Al put Alfred Morris behind the Dallas Cowboys line, and I'm playing he Alfred looked, Morris as a running back too. So, he, yep. So I'm, and it's the same thing for the Colts for me. Jonathan Williams is in. It so was whoever a, starts for this team is in for me, and it, that and it's Jonathan Williams. Yeah, I, I completely agree. It was a big worry and a question mark when it wasn't. You weren't sure if it was going to be Wilkins, right. Williams. Is it going to be a split? You know, it came out uh, that it was going to be a three way split between, uh, and and then Wilkins didn't get the ball. And Jonathan Williams ran very well. This is back-to-back -back games over 100 yards. I expect more of the same. Maybe Wilkins touches the ball four or five times this week, but I don't think 
when Wilkins gets back that they're just going to say, okay, now it's a 50-50. They like running with a, a main guy, just like they've done with Marlon Mack. Uh, I don't want to – where are you guys at with Tannehill in this game? I think you can play him. I think you can stream him, but the the other options that we brought up, guys like Darnold, Foles, uh, I would I'd rather play those guys. Yeah, the nice thing about Tannehill is his rushing baseline has been there these last yeah, several thirty eight to forty, you know, thirty five, forty five yards yep, a game with rushing touchdown upside. So very similar in the rushing touchdown side to to Jacoby Brissett. They they both are utilized uh, around the goal line in that way. Yeah, since returning from injury, Brissett only 148 and 128 passing yards. Don't love him in this matchup. A, a pretty compelling argument can be made that that's where this conversation should end. That that maybe you don't really mess with the individual options on either side of the ball if this is going to be a run heavy approach from both teams. A low, we both, you know, we all believe they may hit the under in this one divisional matchup. But you know, AJ Brown, you're chasing points on on low total target numbers, low consistency. T.Y. Hilton banged up the calf. You know, yes, he destroyed the Titans last year at home, but he was healthy. We don't know if he's going to play. I don't think he will. And I'm not really going to pivot to Zach Pascal myself. No. So it's, no. A, run, it's a running back matchup. And it's then Derrick J Henry, Jonathan Williams. Yeah, and then you look at, you know, Jonu Smith, zero targets last week. How do you trust that? Jack Doyle, okay, okay. is baby hands a safe start? Safe is not the word, but... I mean, Jack, Jack Doyle a, is, is a fine option when you're looking at trying to guess who's going to be irrelevant. Especially if Hilton's Sorry. out, I suppose. You, you could have some upside. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and talk about this one. The Redskins at 2-9 and nine take on the Carolina Panthers at 5-6. and six. The Panthers are Mike's streaming defense of the week for good, oh, yes. for good reason. I mean, the Redskins only have an implied point total of 15 points in this game. Panthers are 10-point favorites. It's a 40-and-a-half point over under. And we get Dwayne Haskins versus Kyle Allen. Panthers kind of reeling right now. Had a chance last week to win that game. Pooped it away at the end. I, I think that's a better way to put it than, you know, the, obviously the New Orleans Saints, they won that game. Yeah. But the Panthers came back and had a chance to win it. So where are you with this matchup? There's not a lot of trust on the Redskins side all the way up the uh, up and down the board. Terry McLaurin, what's his real upside? What do you What do you see here? He did have a season high twelve targets this last. Does that make week. you sadder or happier with the end result? Hap, not not necessarily happier with the end result, but it makes me happier that if we can get Terry McLaurin in that twelve target range, then I know he's going to catch four to five passes. And Terry McLaurin, <laughs> it's so sad. That's like the Dwayne is, Haskins this summary. This is the world we live in. But, but if Terry McLaurin catches four to five receptions in a week, he's he's got the talent to make something happen where I'd, I'd yes, I'd rather have my receivers catching eight passes a week, but McLaurin can, can rip off the big one. So I'm still going to play him as like a wide receiver three. Yeah. I, I would be Match completely is, is willing as well. to play Terry McLaurin here. Panthers are 26 against wide receiver, giving up over 30 fantasy points per game to the position. And there really aren't other options, you know, from the Redskins to to be legitimate threats of of scoring a ton of fantasy points. So uh, I'm in on McLaurin here. I think he's a fine play. Now, yeah, the Panthers struggle immensely against running backs, but you're sitting here staring down Adrian Peterson and Darius Geis. It's just a tough situation. So I, I will throw out for Terry McLaurin. He it will more than likely be shadowed by James Bradbury from the Carolina Panthers, but Bradbury is. He's very hot cold. I mean, he can sometimes he can shut people down like Julio Jones. Bradbury and, seems to be really good at the the bigger, stronger receivers. You know, if, when he plays, uh, except uh, Evans went seven for eighty two on him. Have they played both games this year? Yeah. So so the the first time in in the shadow coverage, and this is pro pro football focus. The uh, in week two, Bradbury was covering Evans eighty two percent of the time. In that coverage, Evans went three for 61. So, I mean, the, yes, the, the, that's not great, three for 61, but you would take that from McLaurin as a wide receiver three. All right, what tough decisions are you facing on the Panthers' side of the ball? Greg Olson, Mike's start of the week at tight end should be – Jason's mine. start of the week. Oh, sorry, Jason's start of the week. Greg Olson. Olson. 
Um, that happened way back at the beginning of the. I barely remember the show. I, I think one of the the tempting starts speaking as someone who was looking at the whole quarterback landscape and saying, "Is there a streaming option out there?" I'm looking at Darnold. I'm looking at uh, Goff. Kyle Allen, you know, look, he oh no. has been oh, hot and cold. Oh no, Jason. Oh no. I'm just saying. No way. Are you just asking whether you? You would consider playing Kyle just, Allen? Just ask me. Just okay, Mike. Mike would no. you consider playing Kyle Allen? Why so? Why so upset? Is it just the one week? It's not just the one week. I mean, he had a monster week: two hundred fifty-six yards. Yeah, I wouldn't three play touchdowns. Me Thank you. Yeah, I wouldn't play me. Like, I'm not. I'm not. He, a, he destroyed Arizona, and then he had the resurgence against New Orleans. And otherwise, you would have been disappointed. You played him. Yeah, that's, not uh, in. That's that's fair. It's just nice to know that you've seen a big blow up type of game out of him everyone twice. could do that we've this is why at the end of the year there Driscoll will, did it there will be 40 plus quarterbacks who have put up a top 12 week because anyone can can put up a top 12 week here or there but as far as betting on it on a weekly basis I'm not so betting. no temptation for no you. Got zero it. all right well there you go <laughs> just uh I'll play a, him as like a QB2 in a super flex you guys see this Christian McCaffrey if you just took his receiving fantasy points he has the same as Odell Beckham Makes sense. Not hard. Yeah. Yeah. If you took his rushing alone, that's Nick Chubb. All of Nick Chubb. Ooh. Makes sense. So you get You get Nick you Chubb get and two, Odell Beckham. Two yeah, players get, in get, one slot. That's cheating. Jason it's loves great. it. Jason loves it. Uh cheat to win. Cheat to win. DJ Moore on in. fire right now. In nine or more targets in six straight games. You think this guy's gonna get drafted as a top fifteen wideout next season? It's, what it's if it's Kyle it, Allen? I was going to say it's tough to know without knowing who their quarterback is, and right. I don't know which one is better. I, well, I mean, you realize that he's putting up all these numbers with Kyle Allen. That's why I'm saying so, I don't know which one is better. Like, is it better if Cam is back, well, or is let's it just better say if, than, yeah. if it's Cam or Allen? Either way, I would. Well, as of right now, I mean, we're in overreaction because we're in the middle of the season. But yeah, I, he should be drafted as a top 15 guy next year. He's he's doing all of these things with a backup quarterback, and he's still extremely young. Like he's DJ Moore is not at his ceiling yet. Agreed. The Green Bay Packers at eight and three take on the two and nine Giants. Packers are six and a half point road favorites. It's a forty five point over under, and it was not pretty for the Packers last week in any way, shape, or form. But you know. Where are you with the Rodgers decision this week? Oh, no decision. He's in. All right. He's in. He's in. He's yeah. in. And then he's going to get dropped, and you're going to send us screenshots. That is correct. We know the future. <laughs> that is fantastic. Uh, Daniel Jones at home, averaging 210 yards, one touchdown. Somehow on the road, he's averaging, you know, he's had three 300 yard games and big touchdown performances, but I'm not expecting any Daniel Jones action in this one. He might not even have Golden Tate, right? Yeah, not practicing on Wednesday. He's in the concussion protocol. Sterling Shepard, I think, is you know a, a guy that when you're getting nine targets a game, um, you know, impossible to go up here if Golden Tate were were gone. He's a talented wide receiver. I think you can start him in a PPR league. You like is Slayton or Shepard more? Shepard. Shepard. I just I I I think Shepard is the clear more talented. Even though you What about the name though? Do you like the name Shepherd oh. or the name Slayton more? Oh, Slayton. He's out there. Slayton is that's a boss name. Yeah. No He's out no. there killing, you know, Slayton. it's just Slayton. Yeah. All right. I just wanted to know. Yeah, I mean it's like one of them's out there slaying. One of them's out there like herding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Come uh, here, sheep. <laughs> Golden Tate, concussion okay. protocol, we'll see. <laughs> Saquon Barkley, is this the get right matchup? On paper, it should be at home. Packers giving up 25.8 fantasy points per game on average, which is 29th in the NFL. Saquon should be able to do it. Uh, I'm going to say he does. Uh, you know, we, we kind of dealt with this in the uh, buy or sell, whether you believe he's going to get more than 80 yards. Barkley is obviously a very, very talented human being and running back. It has not gone well for him. The Jets... The Bears, super disappointed with the last two outings. This is another plus matchup. The nice thing is this one's at home. Those last two were on the road. I think Saquon gets it done. I mean, nobody's not playing Yeah, you're him. not playing him. You just, I think you have to adjust your expectations where a lot of people took Barkley as the first overall pick. 
Yeah, he was the consensus number one on average. It, you know, maybe some other people pivoted, but he was the number one pick. And I think a lot of teams that have Saquon are out of the playoffs. Yeah, it, w it wasn't the best number one pick. It stinks. Aaron Jones, are you worried about the impact of Jamal Williams as you head down the stretch with Aaron Jones? He plays the Giants, obviously, in this game, but then Washington, then Chicago in championship week in Minnesota. I loved hearing what LaFleur said after the game. Oh, what did he say? So, you know, we make fun of the coaches and say, I, yeah, I've got to get I got to get this player more touches. And it's like, you're in control. You control this. But it was specificity. You know, he, he's not necessarily the one doing every facet, right? The personnel groupings and the play calling and whatnot. But what he spe specifically said, because you look at how many targets in the passing game Jamal Williams is, has received – and how few Aaron Jones has received, and that's what he brought up as the problem. He said, on those play calls that I'm getting the ball to my halfback, I need to make sure Aaron Jones is out there. And that's what I wanted to okay. hear because yeah. where his value comes from so much is his ability in the passing game. And if, if the head coach is specifically saying he's going to make an effort to get him the ball in the passing game more, You're uh, optimistic. I am very optimistic. That was, that was my only... Uh, downgrade to Aaron Jones is the target since Devontae Adams. I brought this up a couple days ago, but since Adams has come back, Aaron Jones' target share has absolutely evaporated. And it wasn't that RB targets have evaporated from the Packers. It's just it's a roulette. Who's going to get him? Exactly. And, and now it, it keeps being Jamal Williams. But that's great to hear if, if LaFleur recognizes that Aaron Jones is his better running back. Jamal Williams, I think, has proven that he is better than – the then he had kind of become the butt of jokes last year. Like he's he's a fine, serviceable player, but Aaron Jones is the best running back on the team, and you should be getting him more touches. Devontae Adams is a smash play this oh week against gosh. the Giants. It should be a monster game for against him. Against Janoris Jenkins, Devontae Adams should have a day. Otherwise, though, you're not really playing any roulette I with was, any other pass catcher. I was so sad because I'm looking for monster upside. We're I'm going up. Brooks and I, our team is going up against the 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 super team if you will that you know has monstrous just top to bottom every player looks great and so I wanted big plays and I'm looking at the secondary for the Giants and how beatable they are with big deep plays but you can't take your shot I wanted to go Marquez Valdez Scantling but he's he's disappeared I don't think I could trust the Lazard King you know no. Geronimo Allison is not the deep threat so it stinks because I believe someone will do well here. I think Will his some, name be Jimmy Graham? Probably not. <laughs> uh, I agree. You know, but I, I think one of those three wide receivers, Valdez Scantling, Geronimo Allison, or Alan Lazard, uh, heck, throw Kumaro in the mix. Someone's getting a bomb touchdown in this game. That's how I see it. Remember all those those sweet off season debates we were having, the Geronimo versus the nice Marquez. thing is now nice, you're both dead. The nice thing is <laughs> two you know, dead men on the side of the road. I don't have to look at you, Mike, and say that you were right. No. Yes. And you don't have to look at me and say no, I was I, right. No, I don't. So I feel like we both won. Aaron Rodgers gets to look at both of you and say, <laughs> You're both I, wrong. I lost. Yeah. Yeah. He he was concerned with the integrity of the show and your guys' friendship, so he I, decided to include no one. We do have a note here from uh, our fearless editor in chief, uh, uh, Kyle DeVorgogan. He says, Breaking news for Jimmy Graham. He's accepted his starring role in Weekend at Bernie's 4. Oh, really? Which mm. it, it made me chuckle when I saw it, but then. I got really sad. Did, did I miss th the third one? That's what I'm wondering. Or or, or the, the Bernie's franchise is back with such vigor, they've already planned two more. I think maybe Gore was in the third one. <laughs> Gore? Oh, come Gore on. Gore still Gore's, gets it done. Gore is not the walking dead. That's fair. That's fair. He's not a carcass <laughs> out there. On so, a, so maybe Jimmy Graham's reprising his role <laughs> from the Jimmy, third one. Jimmy Graham locked up multi years. Multi-movie <laughs> contract. <laughs> no, there is no Weekend of Bernie's 3. That's what I thought. Why are we jumping to 4? I don't know. Man. <sighs> He's that dead. Fact check. <laughs> Fact check much. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, quick note here on the injury front. Evan Ingram is not practicing. Oh, man. This guy. And he... I, I don't know. Does it get lost on us that how disappointing the Evan Ingram season is for expectations? It, it, you mix him and Howard. O.J. Howard, and what those two were supposed to represent this season. 
Yeah, it does get lost because obviously they did it very different ways. O.J. Howard's been on the field and has Fair. been horrific. When Ingram was out there, I mean, there was a stretch, you know, I think it was the first five weeks of the season where Evan Ingram was the number one tight yes. end. He was he was out there he doing had, what he's supposed to do. He had the one game against Arizona, the, the only tight end to not crush Arizona. He went out there, put up one for six. But other than that, you were at least – you got points and we're happy enough with Evan Ingram. But you you are right that he has disappointed based on draft stock, but m I would say that's mostly due to injury, which is now a Th factor. This is now a repeated thing for Evan Ingram. When you're drafting him next year, if he is drafted again as a top three or a top four tight end, you, you – Injury, the injury risk. risk needs to be built into his draft price. Yeah, I think that that'll be something we should reflect on after the season. Are there certain players that are, are going to carry the – the injury bug designation, you know, are you going to start looking at T.Y. Hilton through a different lens? Because last sure. year, what, the entire end of the season, he's battling through, uh, I think it was a hamstring injury. Now he's in and out of the lineup. It's true. It's something you're going to have to think about. All right. This next one's fun. Oh, man. The top two rushing teams in the NFL, the 10-1 and one San Francisco 49ers travel to Baltimore to take on the Ravens, who are 9-2. and two. The Ravens are six-point favorites over the 10-1 and 49ers. It's a 45-and-a-half-point over-under. Could see some rain in this game. Uh, it, it don't matter. Jimmy Garoppolo, Lamar Jackson, let's do it. All let's right. see who, uh, who – who's your pick in this game? Who do you, I, I, I'm, I'm taking the Ravens because – Definitely because taking the Ravens. Is, well, it's in Baltimore. So I, I, I mean, would take the Ravens in, in either would, city. Really? I would. The thing is – I, I would as well. The, okay. the reason why is I think both of these defenses are outstanding. Both of these defenses are going to cause problems for the opposing offenses. I mean, you can't just say, okay, Baltimore is running the ball so well, so they're going to do it here. The 49ers defense is excellent against the run, and Baltimore lost – they're starting center, which we know how important that is for the running game. There's going to be problems in this game. But in the end, Lamar Jackson's going to make enough special plays to have an offensive out point of scoring points. I am petrified on the other side. Jimmy Garoppolo, I don't know that I'd want to play him oh, in no. a two-quarterback league. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is a really poor matchup, which I think goes to most of the positions. I'm not in love with... Any of his weapons. I don't want to play Emmanuel Sanders or Debo this week. I mean, you know, Kittle's in. They're, it's amazing. If you look over the course of the season what the 49ers have done to opposing quarterbacks, it's been a, a bloodbath. 30th, 28th, 27th, 30th. That's where they ranked against them. Except for Kyler Murray. Mm -hmm, Kyler runs. Murray, both times, yeah. was a top 10 quarterback against San Francisco at home and on the road, 7th and 6th on the week. You just have to keep a defense that disciplined on the back end with that kind of pass rush. You have to keep them off balance. That's something Lamar Jackson does better than anybody. He is an absolute monster. We don't need to talk about him anymore other than to say you play him. You don't doubt just because you're facing the 49ers. Lamar will do enough. However, I do doubt his receiving options I think he'll do enough because in part of the running game that is you know so valuable for quarterbacks in fantasy football maybe get a rushing touchdown or two maybe get 90 100 110 rushing yards but Marquise Hollywood Brown who was so awesome last week Mark Andrews and really has been a great uh, tight end on the season I'm I'm scared of those options you should be Marquise Hollywood Brown had a good game because he scored twice I mean he was a 42 total yards receiving Almost yeah. thrice. Sure. Should have been. Well, yeah. yeah. Close. Yeah. I mean, that's going to be the challenge here. I think uh, you're going to see – look, you, you want to throw him out there? You better hope for a touchdown. That's the way it's going to be. Mark Andrews? You still play him. You still play him? Yep. Here's an interesting note, though. Other than Jacob Hollister, tight ends have averaged 18 receiving yards a game against San Francisco. But you know Andrews is going to get the targets, going to get the opportunity, and you can't really sit – the guy who brought you here. Yeah. Mark not, Ingram? Say, I was just going to say, same with Mark Ingram. You're not going to really be able to sit him, uh, but he's another one of the options I'm a little bit worried about. I, you know, I think you just have to temper your expectations. If you've got other Ravens in the game that you have to start, like Mark Andrews and Mark Ingram, maybe that means your flex player 
needs to be more swinging for the fences, a, a higher upside guy. On the other side, Col Tevin Coleman, Matt Breida could play could play in this game. Still questionable. Emmanuel Sanders, Debo Samuel, obviously Kittle's in. But what about the other options? Mm. Are you playing them with a grimace, or are you actually benching players like I, Emmanuel Sanders and Debo Samuel? I yeah. I, I, if I can pivot away, Debo for sure. I'm going to pivot away. I'm <sighs> I'm benching both. Yeah, I'm going to try to bench them both, but. I think Sanders Sanders still has the potential to me to have a, a serviceable really? day. Yeah. I am so hesitant with him right now. I get it. Yeah, I've, we I haven't seen anything since the injury to make you think Emmanuel Sanders is someone you should play on, you know, on the regular, and this is a terrible matchup. Yeah, I guess I always feel as though Kyle Shanahan wants to run it ten times to throw it once, if he could do it. Uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers – Traveling to Jacksonville to take on the Jags. The both teams are four and seven. Jags are one point home favorites. It's a nice forty nine point over yeah. under. We've talked a lot about players in this game already. Mike start of the week, Nick Foles. Mike start of the week, Ronald, Ronald Jones, Jones. Both yep. featured in this game. The question mark there's not a lot of question marks. Fournette, Evans, Godwin, Chark. They're all in. I mean, yep. uh DJ Chark should have a, a great week against this Tampa Bay secondary. I think Jameis Winston has earned himself. In, he's pretty much a must-play quarterback, right? I mean, yes, he is. You're not really pivoting from him very often because even when he makes mistakes, he's he's potentially going to lead the league in touchdowns, and he throws for 300 a game. Just know that it's not if he makes mistakes. It's he will. Yeah, don't feel bad, man. When he comes out and his first two drives are picked sixes yeah. or just terrible plays, just go. Behind the back pass. This is fine. Yeah. I signed up for this. He's the quarterback seven on the season. Yeah, that's just Jam it's just Jameis. Yeah. So then the, the only name that's kind of jumping out to me then is actually the upside of a player that uh, Mike is a little sweet on. Oh, my sweetie. And that's D.D. Westbrook. He was he had nine targets last week. That's right. He's coming back to life I think Nick Foles is here. I think he's a flex wide receiver three play this week. Would you rather play D.D. Westbrook or A.J. Brown for the upside? PPR, I'll take D.D. Half PPR. I... I'll take half D.D. That's that's D. That's D Westbrook. That's just D Westbrook. Yeah. But in a half PPR, AJ Brown's upside or D D Westbrook. What do you think? I think I would. Are you just asking Mike? No, he, I'm no, asking both of you. He's mm. asking You're both of us for his lineup. What? <laughs> what? What? No, this is. I'll, I'm gonna play Westbrook. Okay. I'm on the Westbrook side. Buccan Buccaneers. They're brutal, man. Yeah. Brutal against wide receivers. Like to they're me, so brutal that Calvin Ridley had a nice game without Matt Ryan last week. They're so brutal that if you are in dire straits, I think you can play Chris Conley. Mm. That's how bad the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that, are. That's fair. Chris Conley is the type of guy who has two big games a year, yes. and this is the type of game. And he had a lot of targets this last game early four, on. Look, I like Chris Conley. Four for forty nine, six for fifty eight. And then it, and sandwiched in between two awesome games is the two for thirty two against Houston. Like he he really let you down in week nine, and that's I think kind of when people are starting to really buy into Chris Conley. But he's been serviceable, it was like the like the past six weeks. Do you guys worry at all? I mean, you're going to start him, but do you worry about Leonard Fournette? Because I do. No, I mean, who's who's scoring well against Tampa Bay? No, at the running back position. Like when I'm when I'm going to sleep, I have Leonard Fournette check for the boogeyman for me. Like he's safe. He's my safety blank. He checks for you? Yeah. Huh. Like, I'm scared on the bed, but Leonard Fournette's there, so I know I'm safe. Okay. You feel very content with yeah. him watching I'm you. I'm like, oh, the, when, the closet's still a little bit open, Leonard. Just He's, to be he clear, says, does he? No problem. Does he stay awake while you sleep and watch you sleep? Uh, Yeah, that part's a little weird. That but. part's always <laughs> He becomes but, but I wake the up boogeyman. And, I wake up in the morning and you're fine. And I give him his five dollars and I say thank you. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, it, it's just one of those things. I live another day. No problem, Mike. <laughs> I don't think out. he's. I don't he think puts, he's safe. Then here. he puts his helmet on yeah. and goes and plays. I just don't. I don't believe he's safe in this matchup. This, I think he could be the boogie. I'm not saying you're not going to start him. That's. I mean, you you have to. But it's it's really difficult. You just look at you know Tampa Bay's schedule, who they've played, you know, t twice. Two times on the season, two times have they been in the top half of the league as far as fantasy points given up on a week. One was to the New Orleans Saints, and one was to the Rams. That's it, the whole season. And All right, we should water bet this. 
I just it, you, I you said at, I know you said you're going to start him. That's not the question. The okay. question is, you said that. Okay, the, so top fifteen. I don't think he's a top fifteen running back at all this week. That's a good line for a guy who's pretty much a top is, three. It is a good line. Now let me check on my rankings though. Yep. He's, I mean, he's I'm been about fifty fifty on top fifteen this year. I'm I'm willing to take. All right, you guys can do it. Water bed. Oh, but the trick is. It's the Megalodon show, so it's gravy instead of water. Ooh, fantastic. Wait, poultry or beef? <laughs> gotta know, because I gotta... Is you that know, like PPR, half PPR? I want the poultry gravy if it's on clothes. I want the beef gravy if it's in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say if it's shirtless. Sure, that's <laughs> fine, because it'll open my mouth, and I don't got to oh, worry about the stains. To be clear, is that, is that the difference between white and brown gravy? Tea? Is that beef gravy versus poultry gravy? Uh, well, white is not poultry. White is usually more like a like a like a sausage, like a breakfast. But no, yeah, poultry is the lighter. Is like the I like uh, uh, so brown gravy is the beef beef gravy. Yeah. Beef it's beef what gravy. Don't you normally make brown gravy from like the Mongolian turkey beef. turkey gravy? Uh, don't you make it from like they're the, both brown? It's just the lighter color brown. The the, the turkey gravy that's poultry. I need to learn about gravy, apparently. I I think Jason has a degree in gravy. Mm. Mm, I'm riding the him. gravy train. Yeah. All right. The Browns, five and six, take on the Steelers, six and five. Oh, the by the way, don't play O.J. Howard. Oh, that's, a good, that's good advice. I'm here for the people. I feel like that needs its own drop, and I don't. we don't say it. We just right. push the just button once a week. Every time there's a game with O.J. Howard. Just a reminder. Don't play O.J. Howard. <laughs> That wasn't quite <laughs> lyrically. You did the the boom boom was a little better than that. I rhymed it perfectly. It won't be okay. Don't Reminder play OJ Howard. Yeah. Hey yeah. Siri, remind me. <laughs> don't play OJ every Howard. week on uh, from Thursday through Friday. All right. Brown Steelers. Browns are favored against. Oh my gosh! I mean, Kyle wants our best attempt at a duck call. I don't know what a duck sounds like. I feel like you got to use your hand because you Devlin go, Hodges is playing. Oh, you guys just put both. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! That was a fart, Mike. <laughs> that wasn't a duck call. That was a butt call. <laughs> Oh, man. That's a real bad attempt. <laughs> See? It's not so easy. Wait, what, what, what are you, I didn't say it was I easy. Know, I don't know what it sounds okay, like. No, I don't I know got, what I'm got trying it. I got to go I got for. it. Quack. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Is there a duck in here? <laughs> yeah. Well, you you better See, talk about Devlin Hodges. I got to go hunting. That's what I thought my mouth was going to do. <laughs> <laughs> but it <laughs> farted. <laughs> But it uh, didn't. It did not. No, duck farts are a special <laughs> thing. Um, oh, look, my gosh. Duck Hodges, what do you think? Uh, I think it's smart. This game's going to be chippy, and we all know it. Now, the refs are going to be all over this game. Yeah. This is a reminder. It's two weeks after the uh, just horrific fight with Miles Garrett and Mason Rudolph. and the. This uh, game can't be chippy. You can't. You can't afford to get chippy. Oh, these these are the Browns, and this is a Freddy Kitchen run team that seems to be, uh, unfortunately, not disciplined. Vi- disciplined, and so lack discipline. I will say this: I think that you know, <laughs> some, <laughs> for fantasy, <laughs> what was that? That's, one? that's choking. Yeah, that was, <laughs> I've heard that. You're about to die. <laughs> um, what is the sound a duck makes when it chokes? That's the real question. It's, it's the same thing as it's quacking. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we don't talk about it for fantasy often enough. It's too uh, too many layers too deep, but referees can make a big difference on certain games. You know, I, I've seen, especially in the DFS world, where certain referee uh, teams that are known for calling much tighter games, you kind of steer clear of those. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of plays take it away, things like that. And I do think this is a game that's going to be um, I don't know. I, I just I've I've got like th- not great advice here, not good analysis, but just personally, I've got like the the bad vibes on this game. Um, there are certain assets you're going to start. Yeah, Nick Chubb is in. Benny Snell should get 15 plus attempts. Jarvis Landry is my start of the week. Yeah, I mean uh, he's got to be in. And Beckham's in your lineup because he Sadly. he always and, is. And so is Kareem. You is Kareem Hunt in your lineup? Mike? Yes. Yeah, he's, so why he, why such conviction? Why, why Jason, such conviction Jason's with Kareem Hunt? Why? Because he's on the field. He's averaging fifty-five percent of the snaps. Fifty-five. 
Oh, thank you. And he's he's getting targets. Like he's a he's a PPR specialist. He came through with the rushing touchdown this past week. I mean, he's it's not a ton of work, but, but it's enough that he is a playable running back. He was the yeah, I guess I guess you're right. What you was you were gonna give me his ranking? What, last he, was week. he was thirtieth against yes. Pittsburgh the last time they played. So I I just don't know if I have the level of conviction that you have with thirtieth. That's about the same as I see happening this week. Yeah. So I he's he's a guy that I think you can put in your lineup, but he's not a this is by a, any means a must start. Yeah, this is a staunch Steelers defense at home that gives up sixteen fantasy points a game. Break up that sixteen average across Chubb and Hunt, and there's risk with Hunt. Yeah, there's. I'll admit that there's and risk. Yes, he catches passes, but there's risk there. But he's just man. He's been targeted so much that I'm fine playing him. Yeah, you know, and just to bring this up, uh, because you know I'm the resident uh, because you have to contractually yeah, contractually <laughs> obligated. I, I don't I, Beckham to me is not a an absolute must start. You're probably starting him. He's been solid enough. Obviously had a good game last week. That was against Miami. You know, last time against Pittsburgh, 37th, another good. Uh, uh, defense the week prior is 37th. So 37th at wide receiver. That's not someone that's busting and terrible, but there are possibly options that are that are better, and, and this is a really, really difficult matchup, and Odell's not been great this year. I think this is one of those those games that could end up 16-10, yeah. 19-16. So are you benching Baker? Yeah, I, I probably don't want him on the road here. I mean, he the, was, Steel, the he, Steelers put on so much pressure, and Baker is like the worst quarterback under pressure, 25 passer rating under pressure. And at home with that crowd, Jason talked about the chippiness. Look, you're going to feel it in the crowd as well. I'm benching Baker. Fair. He, he was the quarterback nine last time he played Pittsburgh. It was in Cleveland, though, so much different situation. I think – I think that Duck Hodges might be the reason that Baker Mayfield has a fine game. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Any other players you want to talk about? I mean, James Washington had the big week last week. Jalen Samuels has had big weeks, but he's now playing second to third fiddle. James Conner is uh, – I'm sorry, not James Conner. Benny Snell is going to get the workload. The Browns are not a great uh, matchup, but if you're telling me someone gets 20, 22 touches – you you've got to start that play player yep. unless it's Kalen Balaj. Agreed, and it's not. The six and five Rams just got destroyed in prime time. Head to Arizona to take on the three seven and one Arizona Cardinals. Cardinals, well, they're three point home underdogs to the Rams. Cardinals coming off the bye week. It's a forty seven and a half point over under. Kyler Murray at home has finished as the quarterback 11, 14, 12, fifth and then uh seventh in his last home game he's been good he's been great yeah, for fantasy he has you're playing him here against the Rams. yes 100 yeah. all right on the other side you got jared goff my start of the week at the quarterback position he's been bad how many touchdowns does jared goff have over the last three weeks let me do some calculation uh, all of november zero yeah that'd be no touchdowns Start of the week. Yeah, exactly. That talks you into it, doesn't it? But Arizona is just – they're just bad. I yep. mean, they're just bad, bad, bad. Against fantasy quarterbacks, the 32nd in the league, it's just going to be easy for Jared Goff to get some production. Todd Gurley, Jason started the week at running back. It's really fun when you can – so we've got this stream finder tool uh, for our Join the Foot supporters, and, and we we haven't rolled out the new feature yet because it's it's still being developed and it's unbelievable. Um, but we've got it, ha ha, and um, on our side, and so I can look at okay, what's a good matchup uh, for quarterbacks on the season? Sure, that's easy to find. What about the last three weeks? What about the last five weeks? What about the last eight weeks? No matter what button I push, the best matchup is Arizona. So Jared Goff is a fine play. It's like, oh, who's the best matchup over the last three? Last five, last eight. Last, okay, it's always Arizona. Play the quarterback against Arizona. All right, Mike, I need your crystal ball because, yes, Gurley, start of the week, you play him. But David Johnson, Kenyon Drake, and now Chase Edmonds, who has returned to practice, that's the Cardinals' backfield against this middle-of-the-pack Rams run defense. What on earth do you do? They're at home. You play Kenyon Drake. And no one else? And nobody else. And – until you have a reason <laughs> until I see otherwise they uh, Kenyon Drake has been the best running back on the team. I mean, 
And Chase Edmonds has been, in my opinion, the second best running back on the team. Would you play Kenyon Drake or Miles Sanders? I would play Miles Sanders. I would as well. Just because of eliminating the risk of... What if Chase Edmonds gets half the right. work? What if yeah. David Johnson... And is his, the starter. And his whelp on Twitter gets him the starting job yeah. again. And he's, you know, they're coming off the bye. Maybe he was banged up. There's just too many question marks. It will be a committee of sorts. We don't know how it'll break down. And I'm with you. I think Drake is the one that's most assured for work. So let's move to wideouts. I mean, Cooper Cup has struggled yeah, over the last six games. Yeah, I talk about Cooper Cup. I mean, he's, he had that game against Cincinnati where it was 200-something yards. But other than that, it has been the hottest of farts in your lineup. I mean, <laughs> wide receiver 63, 41, 121. It's a burner. Oh uh, yeah, I mean this is don't don't leave this one under the sheets. No, it's a fire hazard. <laughs> what are you? Uh, Here's are, the thing: it's are we gonna, are we back to full confidence it, with Cooper Cup because of the matchup? Yes. Okay, that's where I was going to get to. Is just that you have to you have to translate the same arguments to Cup, Cooks, and Woods, and Wait, so with Woods, your your he's confidence been is back. He, he was their best receiver last week. He a little a little garbagey. A Some, little not all of it though. He was involved in the screen game. He was involved. Early. He had the first catch of the game. So, uh, yeah, I think you just two of these guys, two thirds of these, are going right. to have a good week. So your the odds are in your favor. Now the crazy thing is you can't ignore the stats on the other side of the field. Arizona wide receivers have scored the most fantasy points per game over the last four games. So here you know there's going to be points there for Kyler at home. I trust Christian Kirk. Do you trust Larry Fitzgerald? Larry Fitzgerald is a very sneaky good play this week. Larry plays better at home. We've brought that up in the past. This is coming off of a bye, which for a player his age is probably not the worst thing. And you have Jalen Ramsey, who is probably going to be more so focused on Christian Kirk than Larry. Um, he was you know, in my queue of waiver pickups to go into my lineup this week in my personal league, you know, your your upside is limited when you're talking about Larry Fitzgerald, but I think he's a, a safe play to go out there and get, you know, a handful of fantasy points that helps you win this week. Rank and then these move on. players, Larry Fitzgerald, Curtis Samuel, McCole Hardman. I would rank them probably What's as the you first just name? said. Larry. I would go Larry, Curtis, McCole Hardman. Unless great, I'll tell my friend. I needed a monstrous upside play because I still think McCall Hardman, um, as silly as it is, he might have the most upside. Well, I mean, we we still need confirmation that Tyreek's going to play. Right I, now, it's it's all roses that we think he's going to play, but you need right. that confirmation. Yeah, I, th that advice I just gave was with Tyreek playing. If Tyreek is out, then obviously McCall skyrockets. Yeah, that's one of the big juggling acts you have to do when you have three Thanksgiving Day games. Is you know you got McCall Hardman. He looks like a, a lot nicer start if Tyreek yeah. skips another game. But you, if you're playing somebody else, an Anthony Miller or a Thursday game, it makes it more difficult. Um, Gerald Everett, day-to-day -day with a knee injury. Unfortunate. I'm just stepping away from him myself. What about Higby? What about Tyler Higby, who's actually been involved? I mean, this is the Arizona Cardinals who love saying, like, Hey, tight ends, I'll give you a three-second head start. I, they don't care if it's Ross Dwelly. It, it don't matter. They don't care if it's Red Ellison. Say Red Ellison came through. I mean, if Gerald Everett was out, which we don't expect him to be, he continued would, playing if, in that game, then then Higby would be my start of the week. But he's going to play unlimited snaps. <laughs> it's so and hard. He's, and he's trying I'm just to grimacing because it's Tyler Higby, guys. Here's the th Yeah, I, I would think about him. I'd play <laughs> If Higby was alone, I'd play him over Doyle. Sure, I if agree. he was alone, but he won't be. Everett will be so out there I won't in, limited, play him. in limited snaps. Maybe a DFS play. Maybe. Yeah. All right. The Raiders take on the Chiefs. Is it? Is that true, Brooks? We have four matchups left. Yeah. Holy <laughs> moly! <laughs> this is this is the <laughs> longest megalobol of all time. It's a megalobol now. Oh. Uh, megalodon. Megalodon. The Raiders at 6-5 and five take on the 7-4 and four Chiefs in Kansas City. Chiefs are 10-point favorites. It's a 51-point over and under. I'm bummed. I thought this would be two 7-4 and four teams taking one another on, but then the, the Raiders laid a big old Well, they could still egg. both be 7-5 and five at the end of the matchup. Still for the division lead, yeah. right? I mean, 
Yeah, it's still going to be an interesting one. Patrick Mahomes, Derek Carr. What are the big question marks for you in this game? We know uh, Josh Jacobs started the week. Darren Waller started the week. Those guys are locked and loaded. I have confidence in Tyrell Williams, to be honest, on the Raiders side as well. So you're really looking at these. Ah, Brooks, we finally got a Damian Williams update. Yes, sir. 19 minutes ago. Damian Williams is not practicing After today. the bye, not practicing. So the And they brought in another running back, Elijah McGuire, to work out. Jason's. Fist pump is LaShawn McCoy related. LaShawn McCoy is currently in my lineup, and oh, I am going nice. to. That's got to feel good. That feels good having Damian Williams out. Because I think it's Marlon Mack. Get back soon. <laughs> yeah, I think Shady and Daryl Williams. If Damian's out, both are plays. Yes, I agree. And it's uh, a coin flip on who has the better game, but both have great opportunities against the Raiders defense. The Raiders defense is not good. It's bottom, bottom third everywhere, and. There's going to be great opportunities for the in the passing game for both teams, I think. But my goodness, Daryl Williams, LaShawn McCoy, you can play them both. Elijah McGuire has been signed to the practice squad. Oh, Ooh, okay. all right. What about the – so the matchup is great against the Oakland Raiders pretty much across the board. For fantasy wide receivers, they are 25th, giving up over 31 points a game to the position. The Lizard King are <laughs> – Never. Not doing Never, it. Never, ever, 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 ever. You got uh, you, uh, no. you to take those disgusting yams. Yeah, I'll take I'll take the slap on the face once out of every 11 times you start him, and then you all look at me and be like, I told you so. You And I'll be like, I don't care. Yeah, I mean, he's a guy that at this point you don't want on your roster because you he don't want him on your – He's a lizard you, as well. You don't want he's him the king. to go off on your bench. You want to know how to avoid that? Don't have them. On don't your put roster. him on your team. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> then you don't get really upset that you didn't start him. You um, never want to look at any of the snap count metrics with Sammy Watkins because they'll try to talk you into starting. Uh, him. Don't look at the targets because no. he's getting them. Yeah, Tyreek Hill did practice in full today, so nice. he's expected to play. All right, that's good news for Beautiful. the Tyreek owners uh, named Jason as well. Kelsey's in. Yep. I mean, question mark. Derek Carr, are you Derek taking Carr a chance the on the road here with him? He's the biggest question mark, and I am not. Um, we've seen a couple of different times where the quarterback seemed like a great play because you're like, oh, Kansas City's going to be this great. They're going to be up. You're going to have to throw the ball. It doesn't always work out that well. Obviously, Josh Jacobs, your start of the week at running back, is a great start of the week. I wanted him, but he was already in, on, on, in your slot, Andy. But the reality is Derek Carr has not been good at Arrowhead. He's had plenty of chances. His last five career games in Arrowhead, uh, 186 passing yards on average. Yeah, it's a tough place to play, and it's a tough position. Let's say, you know, like you said, if Patrick Mahomes does get out to a lead, that's a lot of pressure. you got a pass rush coming. You're on the road at Arrowhead. I think it's best to stay away. I agree. Yeah. Kansas City won 28-10 in week two. Mahomes had a mere 443 yards and four touchdowns. Mm. Chargers. All that came in the second quarter, I believe. From uh, just one drive. The Chargers at four and seven take on the three and eight Broncos. Man, this is the other half of that division. Uh, the Chargers, three point favorites in Denver. Denver implied point total of just 17 points, 38 and a half point over under. Uh, you know, the one place that the Chargers give up fantasy points as the running back position. So maybe you look at Philip Lindsay and where his, you know, he's ascending when it, when it comes to running back touches. So you look at Lindsay and say, he's your one play on Denver. Yes. And I, and I love him, but I, as I brought up earlier, we have seen that he is going to get the work. He is going to be efficient with the work. He's going to do a good job, but he, his upside is limited because of Brandon Allen. I just wish that he had, I mean, I'm wishing for Flacco. What a world. <laughs> um, you know, it's it's one of those things where that's, that's why I always try and tell you guys, you're like, well, it can't possibly get worse. You're like, you didn't, yeah, yes, it can, it it can, can get always worse. get worse. Is Haskins the backup? Yeah, it can get worse. <laughs> um, can it get worse from Brandon Allen? Can Drew Locke be worse? Yes, it's possible. Yeah, it's possible. He could be worse. Yeah, so Philip Lindsay, I'm okay he with. He will be worse. Royce Freeman, uh, definitely not. Uh, Sutton is another question mark player. I am not in on Sutton this week. We brought it up earlier, the K Hayward yeah, matchup, Hayward. the Brandon Allen matchup. Um, that feels more like a matchup than, you know, it's like it's Cortland Sutton versus Brandon Allen. 
That's how it feels. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, it's unfortunate. And, you know, Noah Fant, I think in a different circumstance, when you see the snap count and the target share, you're like, okay, let's ride this. Let's let's move on up. Let's get some upside athleticism at tight end. But you have the hindrances at the quarterback position. So you can take the shot. You know he's going to be out there. That's step one for tight ends. Be on the field. Um, he could always catch a touchdown, always break a long play. But you are rolling the dice with him in a very – you know, low over under matchup against the division, you know, yep. uh, rival. Melvin Gordon, last five games, RB 20, 23, 3, 5, and 24. Yeah, he's in. Eh, he's uh, in. I mean, he's but in. But he's just yeah. disappointing. It's a rough year for It's been Gordon a very owner. disappointing, yes, very disappointing season overall for where you had to draft Melvin Gordon. You had to hold on. Then he was terrible for the first few weeks. He's just now an actual startable player, but you, you do play him. Things are trending the right way for him. Austin Eckler, you continue to roll him out. That's the that's the biggest question to me on the entire in this entire game is Austin Eckler because he's been so good, and I think you do continue to roll him out here as what he is an RB two or a flex. Um, but it's not a great matchup. I, I you know this has a thirty eight and a half point over under. That's extremely low. I don't know how it gets to that point unless the Chargers have a good game because the Denver Broncos defense is great and they're in Denver. And the Denver Broncos offense is terrible. So I just, you know, I, I don't see a lot of upside. So Eckler's worrisome, but especially in a PPR league, he usually gets it done at the end of the day. Hunter Henry is the tight end one since returning from his injury. He's been awesome. Yeah, so he's he's going to be in your lineup regardless. Uh, not many players have the old 10-year sample size, but Phillip Rivers, over the last 10 years, averaging 210 passing yards a game in Denver. Never that's, again. That's nice. Yeah. No. <laughs> Phillip Rivers. <laughs> Are you interested in Philip Rivers over your current options, Jason? Would you like to get him back into your lineup and redeem him? I would play Brandon Allen <laughs> before I would play Philip Rivers. Oh, my goodness. He right. is no longer an option for this guy. What did I get you as a little office present? We have a oh, little, like nice. a four-foot Christmas tree in you the office. You got a Christmas tree ornament of Philip Rivers, and the only thing that is good about it is that it looks like the little – uh, rope that hangs on <laughs> the tree. Take it easy. <laughs> Take it easy. What does the rope there? look like? Uh, just uh, well, Philip Rivers He's is swinging now on the tree. On yeah, come on. Philip Rivers is on our Christmas tree, commemorated forever. Uh, a joy to you and a and a uh, hardship to me. Yeah, I wanted to remember that. It was yeah, because that's a, one of the big highlights of my sides, season. <laughs> there's two sides to this. Like I, I took the brunt. I, I now you were hate, the sad side. But do you now love Philip Rivers because of this? Well, no, no. I'm f I, I guess in a way. I mean I would love Philip Rivers if I was on the other side. I guess in a I, way I do. I took I took the I love what he's done for me. Yeah. <laughs> Patriots ten and one taking on the Houston Texans in Houston. Uh the game is a forty five point over under. Patriots are three and a half point road favorites. Lay of the land with Tom Brady, so you wonder what you're doing with him or whether you're doing anything with him. He's the quarterback 24 since week seven. You are mm. not playing Tom Brady. Mm -mm. He is uh, not moving this offense in a fantasy-friendly direction at the at this moment, and they have a great defense, so they don't really lose. Um, Brady's smart enough to do what he should be doing right now. I think if they had a bad defense, you'd see him throwing the ball away less. Right now he's leading the league in throwaways because he knows he doesn't have to go down and score a ton, and that, also that limits Also doesn't want to get hit. Sure, but I believe that if they had a, a bad defense and he thought, I've got to score 28 points in this game to win, I think he would try to extend things, force the issue a little bit more. He knows his defense has him here. Um, so, yeah, you're out on him. His weapons aren't great. You're out on all of his weapons, not named Julian Edelman. That's absolutely true. And if you want to know, you know, look on the other side with Deshaun Watson in the quarterback position. Watson is a fringe QB1 for us this week. Consensus-wise, Right at the 12 cusp, you're talking about looking Nick Foles' way, Dak Prescott's way, looking Kirk Cousins' way. It's a tough decision because you know that while Watson could do enough to get you 20 points, he's not going to be the linchpin of a victory for you this week. Yes, they're at home. That's the only reason I'm okay with Watson. But he's not going to get you to the, play the fantasy playoffs this week. And we've seen actually a, a low side of him Fantasy wise, over the last few weeks, yeah, he he he's not what Lamar Jackson is this year, where L Lamar Jackson just breaks everything. 
right now. Deshaun Watson can completely bust. All those quarterbacks you listed, Andy, Cousins, Foles, Josh Allen, Darnold, Dak, I would play all of them over Deshaun Watson this week. Which stack would you rather have? Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins against oh, yeah. New England or Sam Darnold and Robbie Anderson? Darnold. I thought you were going to just say Brady Edelman. Would you rather have Brady Edelman or Watson Hopkins? And I think on that side, I'd probably go Brady Edelman. On that side, I would – man. On I, I, that one, I It's think, ironic because I would I, take Hopkins. Once again, I'm just looking at my right. own matchup where I've now got the Darnold uh, Allen Robinson against Deshaun Watson and Hopkins. You are fa- – in this week where you are trying to <laughs> battle for seeding, so so you good. face Watson Hopkins against New England. Yes. Come on, baby. Go Patriots. <laughs> hey, here's a cool stat if you're not named Sonny Michelle. He's forcing a missed tackle every eight rushing attempts. That's ahead of Frank Gore. That's it. That's all it's ahead of. Uh, you can watch with your eyeballs. Sonny Michelle has a moment here or there of burst, uh, generally going downfield, not going to the edge. His, uh, his turbo depletes real fast. I, you know, you wonder if that has some, you know, fitness post Super Bowl. He's a youngster. Degenerative did he, knee. Did he not come into this season? Well, I, I agree with that. That could be part of it, Mike. Um, but he has not looked uh, the same, regardless. James White, just one catch last week. Do you just throw that away and put it, it back out there? It was it was a game that was so unique with the weather and the situation there. And I kept, I was watching intently. Um, different uh, rules it felt different like field size and they, they just kept you know they kept grinding away with Sony over 20 carries they just you know that that was that was the feel of that game and so I don't take a lot from that game for fantasy uh, James White has been pretty consistent this year I don't think that he's going to experience what he did last week this week is my point do you play Will Fuller in any circumstance in this game Mike Preferably not. Okay. No. Jason? No, I don't. The 8-3 and three Vikings take on the Seattle Seahawks on Monday Night Football. This game's in Seattle. Vikings are 8-3. and three, Seahawks 9-2. and two, Seahawks three-point home favorites. Oh, it's a 48.5 point over under. This is going to be a good game. Yes, it Monday will. Night Football, Vikings, Seahawks. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Russell Wilson, he's in your lineup at home against Minnesota. No question. You do have question marks everywhere else, though. Chris Carson, Rashad Penny could see a timeshare situation. Hey. Uh, before last week, Chris Carson had 15 or more carries in every single game. Last week, a couple fumbles and a healthy Rashad Penny meant you didn't get what you wanted from Chris Carson. You've been able to ride him for the mo- majority of the season. We do have him ranked higher than Penny this week, but there yeah. is risk now. I still expect him to be the starter, but I think it would be – uh, you know, almost impossible that his workload does not get eaten into in this matchup based on what happened last week. And if there is a significant split here, it's just going to cannibalize both players in a uh, negative matchup. Minnesota has been very good against the run. Their top five, I believe, only giving up 16 and a half fantasy points per game. Because they're, they're, they play against the run with their terrible secondary. Right. They're like, we'll stop the run. Well, that's exactly what Tampa does. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, you don't need to run on them. You can throw on them now. And so there's there's worries here for either for either party. Rashad Penny is a guy that, you know, huge waiver wire pickup. But low I'm, upside I'm this week. Probably not starting him. If I if I spent the money and I got him, I'm probably not starting him yet. You don't have a clue what kind of workload and it's a bad matchup. Yeah, I don't disagree, and ultimately these guys are both going to get opportunities to start the game. If one guy gets the hot hand, that's when you could see that player Mm -hmm. um, put up fantasy production over the back half of the game, but it's a tough team to have a hot hand against. Tyler Lockett, you're throwing out last week. You're playing him. Mm -hmm. He's at home. Mike, you got the start of the week of DK Metcalf. Yep. Look, last week it didn't come to fruition for Josh Gordon. Did not see. No, I'm done. Yeah, I think Gordon's gone, and Metcalf you can can be uh, confident in. And he was – Metcalf had some ups and downs in that game, some dropsies. Yeah. He could have had a monster performance. Jacob Hollister, Minnesota allows the second highest opposing tight end market share. Hollister last week, 
Could have had a very easy touchdown. We've all said we'll go back to the well with Amber Crombie. Yep, I think Abercrombie can have a very good game here. Russell Wilson's been averaging uh, 2.8 passing touchdowns per game at home this year. The tight end position is basically do you get a touchdown? So, you know, these are the bets you make on guys where it's like, oh, okay, things. there's enough reasons to believe probability of him getting a touchdown is high. All right, secret MVP candidate Kirk Cousins. Since week five, he is the quarterback six in fantasy I do believe you can play him in this game, but Jason, yep. do you have the prime time fears for Kirk Cousins? Uh, you know, I looked into a lot of the prime time narrative. His record in prime time is terrible. Uh, that's bad. That's that's Sounds worse really than terrible. Um, the the reality is his fantasy production. How do we make a word that's worse than terrible? What if we just mispronounce it? Mm, <laughs> genius. <laughs> Uh, but the, the stats, genius. <laughs> the, that's less than genius. Right. <laughs> uh, the, the stats have been pretty good for Kirk cousins. He said, was that another <laughs> duck fart? Duck? <laughs> A duck fart all over the place. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with Kirk cousins. I, I, you know, especially he's getting, uh, feeling back is the expectation. So I think you can play him. I'm not too worried about the prime time. Uh, Kirk cousins buy or sell Kyle Rudolph. A touchdown in three straight games. Does it become four? Seattle's defense is 29th in fantasy points given up to the tight end position. Kyle Rudolph should be a, a start of the week. They they Seattle is wow. Seattle Even is with Thielen back. I thought about it, and then the Thielen thing made me shaky. Yeah, but if you look at uh, fantasy points above expectation at certain positions, Seattle is really really bad against tight ends that's it's like a low-key Arizona you don't see it as much because of the matchups and who they've played but um you don't want to be a low-key Arizona at tight end no you don't so I, I think he is absolutely in consideration this game's got a nice I over play, under I take the over I think it's going to be a yes a back and forth battle Seattle allowing the fourth most passing yards per game Minnesota, the second most wide receiver fantasy points allowed over the last four games. Oh, man. Mike speaking about their secondary. Looking at the weather here, I mean, it's, it's too far out. This is Monday. Everything could change, but I saw negative four, and I was worried. But that was, it's 42 degrees, uh, dash four miles per hour wind. <laughs> Excellent weather. <laughs> Don't worry about was, the weather. I was about to be baffled by yeah. this seattle weather seattle going through a real tough <laughs> yeah, time it's, uh, it's the vortex cold is back. front coming in well we play games in uh what like mexico city and london <laughs> have we ever thought about doing some up in the uh great north the, the great north white Pole? north no just up in canada like doesn't canada I, want no, some games Buff know. buffalo's played in canada before uh, nor north north of that I, let's, go, oh. let's go up yeah i said the north pole well that's a little too high we All gotta right, well, come on we get goldilocks like, this thing <laughs> greenland is that is that acceptable for you? I don't know, but uh, <laughs> here's the one thing I just got to get this out because I was talking about this to I believe it was to you, Mike. Um, why do we why do we build not domes? Mm. Why in the world in today's day we have the we technology? Don't, we don't build not domes. no. There are yes no we don't. Yeah, uh, new the majority of new stadiums have rough situations. If it has been built in the last ten years and it doesn't have a roof. Shame on you. It's bad for the fans, bad for the – like, oh, we, we play rough up here in the north. It's like – but the fans aren't – the fans don't want to sit out there in snow. Just put a roof on it. I hate That's a very, very strong end of Megalodon show take. Mm, speaking of end of Megalodon. Well, we're not there yet. Not yet. Wait, wait, wait. Why aren't we there yet? Because – Ballers on a Budget, presented by FanDuel. Except we are there, because I don't want people cheating. That's what I, I was going to say. We, we don't need no Megla cheaters here. So the hashtag's coming right now. That's what I was wanting to bring up, because yeah. I don't want to do it at the I'm very end. I'm with you. So at the FF Ballers, just send us a lovely tweet. Yeah, let, let us know if you got through the entire Megalodon show. And you got to use the hashtag... Snoods. That's yeah. spelled S. No, spell it however you want. No, well, not, we want to be able to see <laughs> that. Spelled S N O O D S. Send us your snoods. We're gonna. 
take it easy over there. We're gonna we'll find someone. We're gonna give them a hundred bucks to shopballers.com. And you know what? I also will accept hashtag duck fart. Oh, either one. Yeah. Well, you, you need snoods in it. If you yes. want to add some hashtags that summarize this megalodon, yeah. your experience. Oh, that's some, great. Add them to the uh, – add talk, some more. Talk about your experience and hashtag snoods and hashtag whatever you want. Hashtag make sure, exhausted. Make sure snoods is yeah. in there. Describe how the episode was for you. That way we know you listen to the whole thing. We're giving out that gift card. Yeah. All right, Ballers on a Budget presented by FanDuel. Don't miss your chance to win an all-expenses-paid trip to Arizona. Come hang out with us. We're talking about the weekly Fantasy Footballers Leaderboard Series. You go to FanDuel.com slash Ballers. You can enter each and every week. We give away DFS passes, and then you get a chance for that all-expenses-paid trip at FanDuel.com slash Ballers. My Ballers on a Budget pick, to me, it's just a huge bargain this yep, week. I agree. And it's DJ Chark. I mean, what a perfect Ballers on a Budget pick. It's Shark Week. It's a Shark oh. Show. It's a Megala Show. It's oh. a Megala Pick. This is a great opportunity. Do, Somehow, do, 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 do. <laughs> uh, at 6900 on FanDuel, nice. in terms of total price at the wide receiver position, that is 22nd. There are 21 other wide receivers that cost more than him on FanDuel across the slates. And this is just a smash matchup yes. for Nick Foles and DJ Shark against yep. Tampa, who gives up the most points to wide receivers um, and Tampa's going to score on Jacksonville, so I it's that's a home run to me. Sure thing. I'm going with, for the first time ever, the cheapest player at a position. There, you can't you can't spend less than the cheapest. He's li you want you want to spend more than this player. You would have to spend up to get Rudolph or Finley or Haskins or Brandon Allen. And Rudolph ain't even playing. I'm talking about the Red Rifle. Andy Dalton, why don't you stack him with Tyler Boyd? He only costs six thousand dollars. Yeah, why, why not just save there and and put Christian McCaffrey type players in your lineup that you know is going to have a ton of points? Yeah, that's the way I'd go. All right, Mike. All right, so mine is look, it's a little bit sketchier because it's a more of a tournament. I, li I, I like it because if you get it right. It, yeah, and, and it's it's Darius Geis. And look, here's what's going on with Darius Geis, running back for Washington. The snaps and the carries have gone up both weeks since he has, has gotten back from health, and he gets the Carolina Panthers. The Panthers, since their bye week in five, ga five games, are allowing the second most points to fantasy running backs. And despite Kyle Allen looking good this past week, his range of outcomes of collapsing and forcing the, a a neutral game script for the running back position and for Washington, even with Dwayne Haskins as the guy, I think that Geis is is in play as someone with that has solid upside. Well, it's a it's a like you said, it's tournament play, and if you're playing in our and tournament, he's, and he's fifty four hundred at Fanduel dot com slash ballers. That's where and and it's weekly. You don't have to have played all year. It's not a that type. You just win any week. And the thing is, if you're in a group of people and Geis ends up with the workload or ends up with, you know, Kyle Allen pick that goes down to the one and now you get a free touchdown, those things those things will work out. We do have a few injury updates because, well, the, the Megalodon show spans weeks, it feels like. Uh, Devonta Freeman is in for Thursday. Julio Jones optimistic that he will play. Austin Hooper is officially out, and then T.Y. Hilton limited today in practice with a calf. Mm. It's going to be shaky with T.Y. Hilton heading into Sunday. Always has the upside. I mean, he's T.Y. Hilton, but scary stuff. And I, I want to say this. I mean, it is Thanksgiving, and we are at the very end of our Megalodon episode. But here we are. It's week 13. You're getting ready for the fantasy playoffs. I can't wait to see how our listeners' teams do in those hashtags tag foot clan titles coming in but i just wanted to say genuinely thank you for your loyalty in supporting this show so many different ways listening reviewing social media we talk to so many of the foot clan and you are awesome people in the discord chat on the forums and you know at jointhefoot.com where there is seven thousand plus you've supported this podcast we've been independent now for five years since we started the show and I hope it doesn't get lost in the equation over 160 plus shows a year but thank you thank you thank you very much uh, we we're so appreciative for all of your support 
And well, uh, I'm thankful for this Thanksgiving of the Foot Clan. Was that supposed what? to be like a little? Was that? That was, that was supposed to be like a little, little boy me saying what I was thankful for for Thanksgiving. Oh, because like at the table you yeah, go around you go and, around you, around say and thank you say thank you. Share. That wasn't obvious. You need to see a, a speech therapist. I did. Look at me as a grown up. <laughs> now I just need to see a word therapist. <laughs> My speech is fine. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> All right, that is it for the Megalodon. Hey! We did it! Oh, Brooks is passed out. Oh, man. Oh, no. Someone revive him. Take care, folks. Good luck this weekend. Happy Thanksgiving. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Oh, it's not quite done. It's not quite done. We're still here forever. (laughs) Because I want to remind you, if you're thinking about home security, you've got that special Black Friday deal from our friends at Simply Safe Home Security. They're giving our listeners a very exclusive special offer. You get 25% off any new system plus a free HD security camera. So don't wait. Go to simplysafe.com slash footballers to get 25% off plus a free security camera. This is the best home security deal that you will ever see. Don't miss this amazing Black Friday deal. That's simplysafe.com slash footballers.